What's up, YouTube? And Spotify, Google Podcasts, anywhere you get your podcasts from. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, Ryan and I have just had a last minute panic just doing stuff, but uh, which is why <laughs> <laughs> neither of us are actually ready. My eyes, is, my eyes still got like eye drops dropping out of them. <laughs> so. yeah. I decided to do, I just, I, I've got, I made this thing to hold my dosing tubes today. And for some reason, I decided 10 seconds ago would be a good time to put the dosing tubes. Like, what? Just leave it, mate. Anyway, I know. Why Why now? <laughs> God, I do that. I do it all the time. It's always crazy. Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to the Prestige Reef Talk Show, Sunday night, Reef Talk live stream. Uh, I am Alex, aka Reef Talk. And with me, as always, is Ryan from the UK's number one coral selling website, prestigereef.co.uk. Ryan, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Very well, yeah. I've got that down now. I've remembered what to say and everything. So, yeah. <clears throat> so you well, it, oh, you've episodes. done well so far. Normally, I have to remind you, but so far, you've done well. Thanks. Um, you marking me off as you. As yeah, there, there's a bit that you might miss that you usually miss. So I've got that written down, so don't worry. Remember questions? No. Uh, that's literally yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm all right with that. <laughs> I'm organised. I've been good at that lately. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so, what we're going to be talking about today, if you've just clicked on this video and you're like, all right, how does this professional coral farmer, professional coral farmer, um, keep yeah. corals? <laughs> I wondered who our guest was when you wrote, we've got a <laughs> yeah, professional yeah, yeah. coral farmer on this week. I've got uh, Christian from Signature Frags on, so he's coming on. Yeah, we'll just kick you off. and That's um... a proper professional. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're going to be talking about, so if you just clicked on this to, to see what, to what's what, we're going to be talking about how Ryan keeps corals, basically. But we've got a load of nonsense to talk about first. So I'll put a pinned comment after the, the after the video uh, to click on so you don't have to watch nonsense, although you've just watched two and a quarter minutes of nonsense, so you might as well watch another hour of it. True, true. Um, what have you been up to, Prestige Reef? Since uh, we why, why are you asking me that question? Because I already told you earlier I've got nothing to tell you for this. Well, because <laughs> I haven't either, so <laughs> should we just move on? My, yeah, my week in reefing is literally, I, I haven't done very much at all. The only thing that actually is a bit um, annoying, which I haven't mentioned this before, so my, I have a, you know how I have those massive containers for like calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium? Yeah. <clears throat> they, they are a brilliant idea until they go wrong. Now, those are actually fixed in the farm. I cannot remove them. Mm -hmm. um, it's a 140-litre container. The calcium at the bottom has solidified. I was about just thinking, what happens when you need to clean them? <laughs> well, that's the problem. The calcium at the bottom has, solici has solidified. Um, uh, and it's now, because it's now hard, the <laughs> dosing uh, can take, the, the dosing tubes can't suck up the liquid anymore. <laughs> and there's nothing I can do. And I, so I, what I did is I drained it down. I took all the calcium solution out. I then put that into a separate container. I then filled up with fresh RO to see if I can get it to, to dissolve. Like four days later, still will not dissolve. You need to put boiling water in it. Oh, is that how it works? Yeah. Well, so this is I've um, alkalinity solution. Any alkalinity buffer crystallizes if it goes cold, or most of yeah. the stuff does. Anyway, I don't. Maybe it's certain types, but anyway, so the only way to well, you, you're supposed to warm it up. But if you pour boiling water in, I bet yeah. it'll do it. <clears throat> um, as, uh, yeah, or yeah, boiling water with um, citric acid or something. It's almost like it has a layer on top of it because if I sort of chip it so to break it, when calcium dissolves into water, it creates heat. Have you noticed that? When you mix your dosing up with the calcium, okay. it gets really, really hot. I've never noticed um, an exothermic yeah. reaction. Yeah. So when so when I actually start mixing it or like chipping chunks out of it, it starts to create heat in in, in the <laughs> in the barrel. So it is doing something, but unless I'm breaking it, it's almost like it has that layer on top that's stopping the water from penetrating it. So is your so, calcium at like two twenty parts per million now? Then uh, no, because it's I'll be honest with you. You know how I told you a minute ago uh, that I uh, get distracted and I don't do things for long periods of time. Sometimes um, I knew that there was a problem with my calcium about three <laughs> months ago, and I've been manually dosing it ever since. Really? Yeah, I've been manually dosing Prestige. it. Prestige. And, and then it might not have been three months ago. It probably was uh, maybe like six weeks ago. No, it was three months. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> um, so I, I've been doing it manually because calcium doesn't drop as quickly as alkalinity. Um, okay. But then, so what, after I removed it all, because I thought there might be a problem with the dosing lines, and obviously the dosing lines go up into the ceiling and run down to each of the tanks. Mm -hmm. So 
I just thought I can't. I don't want to have to deal with that. Getting up into the ceiling to like sort all the lines out. As soon as I took them out and put them into the new container, they started working immediately. <laughs> so like, so I spent months of manually dosing it when I could have resolved the issue in probably about five minutes. <laughs> well, so this is. I we, we had the same issue last week. I had my smart tester that I couldn't be asked to fix. There was a, a you just had to clean. I had to clean the beaker basically. And yeah. I was like, ah, oh, five minute job. I'll do it later. <laughs> so yeah, it's literally something that I would recommend to people. And this is something where it's do as I say, not as I do. If you um, see a problem like that and you think it, oh, yeah, yeah. it's gonna be a pain in the ass to fix that, I'll do that another day. Deal with it immediately because another day it will be a much bigger problem. I do that all the time. Everything is future Alex's problem, basically. Yeah. Case in biggest case in point, that bloody Tropic Thunder Monty. Yeah. Or I, I, I got to, I got well the Tropic Thunder Monty, I got to the point where I pulled pulled a third of my rockscape out, chipped it all off, got rid of it. And when I put it back in the tank, there were two bits, maybe a centimeter square. They were tiny yeah, yeah. size of your thumb that were left. And I was like, I'll put some putty on that at some point. And then like uh, uh, I'll do it tomorrow, and then tomorrow became next month, and then next month became six months, and then a year later, and it's taken over again. It's like it's oh. taken over the rest of it. <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> just uh, it's one of those things. But I I think if people can get into the habit of doing that, that will save so many problems uh, yeah. across all yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. all of what we do. Um, life. So most, <laughs> yeah, life. most reefing lessons are life lessons that is know. true that is, that i've noticed that as well that, that, that a lot of the things that are very important with what we do um if you apply that to the rest of life your whole life gets better <laughs> yeah, one of the things really. that i wish people would do and, and it's, this applies to life as well is and it's hard to i'm not quite sure how to to put this <clears throat> is, and this is gonna come out the wrong way is to care less about your tank do you, now, when you've Explain. been doing this for a long time, <laughs> okay, you you even you said this. There's things that experienced reefers don't care about. Yes, that that new people do care about. So everyone looks at I've their made tank. A video and goes, on that very subject. Yes, well, everyone looks at their tank and goes, "Oh, I don't like that tiny, insignificantly small piece of cyano that's in one section." It's not everywhere. It's just in one tiny section. So they then try to deal with, um, they try to put a chemical in there just to deal with that small bit. They just ignored it. It probably would go on its own. Yeah. Well, selective laziness is actually quite good because <clears throat> of that exact reason. Yeah. But you, but the trouble is it's it, you have to select it correctly because a really good example. I've got an Aptasia in my water box tank. Yeah. I saw it about, a month ago or two months ago or something and i've had i've had them weirdly i've had them appear and disappear in there before so i don't know a year ago i saw a tiny one i didn't do anything about it and it disappeared so what you're this, saying is your water quality is so bad you can't even keep that taser alive <laughs> well exactly but um but it's this is this is steadily being getting bigger and bigger and it's kind of size of your well it's size of your thumbnail now maybe and I just I just need to putty over it. It's in a little cave, so it's perfect yeah, to, be, yeah. to be puttied over. So that is a bad thing to leave. Yeah. You, I don't think it's ever a bad thing to leave. It's rare that something you should need to deal with immediately. Most things, it doesn't matter if you leave it a week. Like that, I'll tell you, if I leave it a month, it probably won't be a problem. But there are some things that, that, that benefit from a, a small gap and will sort themselves out. But there are other things that won't. <laughs> so you've this, got is to what, I've just read, this is what I meant by it. There are things about your tank that you don't like, isn't there? Mm. there are things yeah. about your tank which i and those things you don't like when i look at your tank i don't notice it no this is true so that's what i mean by you need to care less not care less in terms of what you're doing but care less I in see. terms of how you feel about the small things yeah and that definitely applies to life because most of the things we worry about in life never yeah, happen so yeah 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 Oh wow! This is uh, how to run your life by a uh, philosophical reading for you. Professional I, it, life coach. <laughs> do you remember ages ago I said I wanted to do a video? That was the video I wanted to do it on. Basically, I wanted to do two different videos. One of them would it would be titled "Care More," and the other one would be titled "Care Less." <laughs> <laughs> so there'd be I'm contradicting. Write that down for a sec. One, yes, if, that, if you <laughs> if you make that video now, oh, I'd love to. Yeah. Yeah, you would. <laughs> I know you would. Uh, no, I've got, um, I've got actually got loads of uh, of ideas now for for weeks on end of stuff that I really want to make. So 
what like i've always got a load of ideas like 50 or 100 ideas yeah but when i start going through them i'm like nah, nah, don't know about that. it's because they're not really they're not good ideas then if you've got no, they, they, of often, they often are, some of them aren't great but some of them a lot of them are really good but there's there's loads at the moment that i really want to make and yeah. think oh, that will be good but but yeah those uh those two at the top of the list now so next friday yeah yeah i better i better get a video next week then haven't i well you need to commit to a uh, video because it's been a while i know i know we discussed this a minute ago so what video are you going to commit to doing prestige next friday next do you do fridays when do you no, sundays. sundays is all you like put them out this is what happens when i do the live streams i don't make a video and when i don't do the live streams i do make a video so it's always <laughs> you, you always see me every week um but so i need to basically not do the live stream next week <laughs> And it will force me to make a video. Oh, I could talk about lights. Yeah. I won't. Oh, don't get too excited doing it on your own. <laughs> but, like, okay, I'm going to say this right now. With 100% certainty, you will get a video from me next week at probably about six o'clock on Sunday. That's my wow. promise. Committed there you go. It. I have Excellent. now committed. Like so, okay. there you go. that will motivate me to do it. Because I'll be embarrassed if I don't now. <laughs> oh, and we will all embarrass you. <laughs> you will always... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I'll will be, up be all the, night the subject now. of the live stream, yeah. <clears throat> all night I'll be up working on it. Good. Cool. Okay. All right, there we go. Uh, hopefully it will get me back into doing it more consistently. Because there is definitely a momentum with YouTube. When oh, you stop yeah, doing <laughs> it, you then feel it's okay not to do it. Whereas if you, when you, once you start doing it again, you go, oh, well, I've done one week. I might as well do another week. And then, and then another week. This is another life lesson. So like I, when I, I used to run quite a lot when I was, I don't know, 10, 15 years younger. I was going to say, not, I, not now, you can tell. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> and I ran all the time. And as soon as you stop running, yeah, like, I got to the point where I was actually, I wasn't like, I wasn't winning any race. Oh, yeah. But... <laughs> oh, yeah. What point did you get to? Come on, impress us. Well, so it, it won't mean anything, but my, my fastest, I did 10K races and I got under seven minutes per mile. And that, okay. that was quick. If I was running now, it would be I don't know if that's minutes, good or not. So ten but... minutes a mile, if, if I'm lucky, it, that was fast. Yeah. That was that was all right. But it, I got to the point when you stop running. Yeah. Sometimes, like you train for quite a long time, do a race, you enter a race, and then you stop. Yeah. And you give yourself a break just for a yeah. couple of weeks, and then once you've had that two weeks off, you're like, oh, that's amazing. Yeah, I just have another week, and then that becomes yeah. three months, and then you start and, again, and then you and never you're not go doing back. seven minutes a mile. You're doing eight minutes a mile or nine yeah. minutes a mile, or whatever. And yeah, so it's, this yeah. is life. Life lessons. Why you mm. miss that? You miss those days when I was addicted to running, don't you? When I was oh, running you used to every phone me weird. Yeah. I used to, I used to, I used to send you voice breathing message. heavily. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and I was like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> I, if, well, if you would message me, I would then reply to you. But because I was running, and because I, I run with my phone, I mean, a normal person would just wait. No, no. <laughs> you like those creep that creepy breathing, didn't you? Yeah, I've, I've kept all those recordings. Actually, I'll upload them one day. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but yeah. Anyway, yeah, but yeah, on. But getting out of uh, out of the swing. But all right. Well, look, we are going to move on in that case because we've actually got quite a lot to cover today. Yeah. Um. So we'll move on, but we'll move on to the, the usual things first. So that is starting with uh, member questions. Okay. Uh and there's a couple that are kind of related to the, the topic today. But the first one is from Das Lettuce. He says, Ryan, how do you select uh, how do you select which corals to farm for eventually fragging versus which pieces to sell? So when you um, buy a load of stuff in, what do you what do you frag and what do you sell? But I okay. would guess you frag anything that you can frag and you sell anything you can't frag. <laughs> uh, there is, yes, that is true to some extent. Um so originally, when I was very, very first starting the farm, what I would do is I wanted to make my money back on the boxes. So I would frag, um, I, I would take out and say, let's say I divide something into 10 pieces. I would sell nine of those pieces and then I would keep the 10th one and I would grow that out. And I still got the pizza, many of the pieces of coral from my very, very first box from four years ago. I actually, one of the gonies which I fragged um, and I've never touched it again, what started at like it was like this big because obviously I fragged it down mm -hmm. and it's now like this <laughs> after all that time um the yeah so and the other thing is if if it's something that you can't get again so there's some corals that you can get over and over again for when you're importing them from Indonesia uh, so things like um uh New York Knicks torches 
um, dragon soul torches, things like that. You can get all the time. I'm never, ever going to get a jack-o'-lantern leptoceros in a box. It just doesn't happen. Oh, really? I'm, not once have I ever got one of those. And you might, you have, do you have that all the time in the yeah. farm? Yeah. yeah. yeah so That's good. That's good because we don't need to import that, Carl. Yeah. So, so one, of, <laughs> one of my customers was here on, when was it? Friday? Yeah, they were here on Friday. And I have a bicolored um, Goniopora. And it's like a genuinely really, really nice one. There's a rubbish picture on the website. It's terrible the picture on the I've website. Seen that. Yeah, yeah. But it's 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 so it's half pink and half purple, and it's like a real highlighter bright pink. Um, I have two frags of it. I I think the original piece, I've probably sold 10 of those frags before. Now the guy wanted to buy one of those frags, and he really wanted to buy one of them, but I wouldn't sell it because I, I can now divide those again. Yeah, okay. So that <laughs> that tells you um what's good and what like if I can get it again, then I'll sell it. If I can't get it again, I'll keep it. So okay. that's the answer to your question. <laughs> and his follow-up question is, do you have any particular corals that you're on the hunt for, either personal collection or farming-wise? That is a good question. I actually don't, is the honest answer. Um, if if I you see... were a stickhead, you would. Yes, but yeah. I'm but, but I'm not. are massive collectors. <laughs> yeah. I If I see something that's different, like a Montipora, which you don't see very often, um, there's a... Uh, I think it's a yellow fever Montipora, which I've got, which I've grown out and is now on the website. Um, I put a picture of it on Instagram the other day. It's pink with yellow yellow polyps. Now that you get, you see things like sunset Montipora all the time, um, mystic sunset Montipora, Grinch, um, all those like seasons greetings. But this was one that I hadn't seen before, like a real yeah. light pink with with yellow pipes. It's quite striking when you see it in person. Um, so I went, yeah, I'm going to get that. I'm going to, I'm going to propagate that. So that, that's what it is. It, it comes down to. That's a MILF, a Montipora I'd like to frag. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So, but generally speaking, I see so many corals now that they all sort of blur into one for me. I got a nice orange Goniopora. When I say orange, it's got orange centers, um, which okay. I need to frag down. Um, and I will Have probably. I seen that? No, I don't think so. I need to see that. I'm a bit obsessed with it. It's about this big. It's huge. Ryan is making the gesture the size of a, a European football. Yes. <laughs> for the podcast. People. And the next time I tell it, it's going to be this big. Yeah. <laughs> but, Ryan but it is, is it's quite big. Apart. This is the sort of thing where I like it because I've never seen one with <laughs> orange centers. And you're going to go, yeah. You're eh, boring, yeah. It's all right. It's all right. Yeah, okay. Because <clears throat> the, the, the lashes on it aren't particularly brightly colored. They're sort of like green. But it's, it's the orange centers that make it stand out. Okay. Next question is from Dragon Hunter, who says, Please could you discuss the base parameters for keeping corals? And we will do this, i.e., nitrate, magnesium, calcium, alkalinity. Uh, I'm having issues with my tank, and I have uh, I had a massive piece of red plating, Monty, plus a couple more beginner SPS that bleach randomly or very quickly. I have softies that are doing perfectly fine, uh, including a green torch. Green torch is not a softy, and a leptoceros. Yeah. Leptoceros is not a softy either. Both have skeletons. <clears throat> um, but anyway, yeah, we will do that. We'll do that, Dragon Hunter. <laughs> Don't you worry. We'll come on to it. Uh, Push Button Reef has uh, three questions as well. Number one, just watched your video on reducing phosphate. How did you get on with the Lemmy MP? I didn't get on with Lemmy MP at all. It's ba carbon dosing, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the problem with um, any form of carbon dosing, whether it's Tropic Marion, Nopox, whatever, is that it, it can be quite aggressive. <laughs> yes. So it can strip yeah. it can strip that stuff down real fast. And if you take your eye off the ball in testing, which we all know I do from time to time, yeah. um, it strips out. So I, I found it, um, it was very, very effective indeed. I didn't test for a couple of weeks, uh, or I can't even remember how long it was now, but I didn't test often enough. It stripped nitrate and phosphate to zero, and I got dinoflagellates, <laughs> and it took me about three months to beat that. So did it work on your phosphate then? Uh, yes, but it was, it was usually a, has a, a significant effect on nitrate and less of an effect on phosphate. It was a lot more. It's it, yeah, it's definitely more. Effect, or I've in my experience, nit uh, carbon dosing is more effective on nitrate, but it stripped both down to sod all basically. Yeah. Like, oh god. I like Ian's <laughs> comment. I I feel exactly the same way, Ian. <laughs> uh we'll never think about milfs in the same way yeah <laughs> um but yeah so i don't like elimi mp because it means you have to test 
I think if you if any kind of um, carbon dosing or anything, any any aggressive method to reduce your nitrate and phosphate, yeah. Um, you've, if you're testing regularly, then you're fine. Yeah. But if you're not, and if you slip it for a couple of weeks, you can it can cause you problems. And it 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 got me dinoflagellates, which took me months to clear. <laughs> the best thing to do <clears throat> is to half the, the recommended dose is what I find. And then yeah. and then gradually, if it's not going fast enough for you, then gradually increase it. Um because yeah, the, the very worst thing that didn't can happen. <laughs> you say you did do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, did you? Oh, I was gonna yeah, say the very yeah. worst thing that can happen is that it takes Strips twice as long. And you get, and you, get Dino. Well, <laughs> yeah, you gotta test at least a few times. I know. I can't I, it was it was three or four years ago maybe and I can't remember how often I was testing, but but yeah, absolutely. Start slow is, is always the best way. But um, I love the sound of a Lemmy of a Lemmy MP. Um, how it sounds. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like the little noise it makes. No, I like uh, I like the idea of it. And the, the um, Reef Dude's um, live stream he did with Luekus, where Lou explains the, the Tropic Marion dose uh, carbon dosing it was yeah. really interesting. But the Tropic Marion suck at product naming. Yes. Like they've got, I think they've got three, um, maybe even four carbon dosing products. Yeah. One's called Reef Active, one's yeah. called Bacto Balance, one's called Alimi MP, and one's called Plus MP. Yeah. What the hell does that mean? You've got no chance of understanding any of that unless you either read the instruction, the, uh, the label, read yeah. the manual. No one's going to do that. <laughs> read the label or watch that video. It's just like, just call it carbon dosing or nitrate and phosphate remover one two and three yeah anyway yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I, I go i get on that ramp from time to time tons of suck at naming as well like they, all their uh, products are, are oh, Oz, like, osmolator yeah and the nine two three four and it's like what was what i don't mean? i don't know what that is anyways i think all their pumps are called like nine two oh four oh. and nine three oh four and that it's like just tell me something that means something <laughs> yeah yeah anyway that's that's like ecotech do that really well so you've got the oh, what, with Radion. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, but then they only have one product line for that. Yeah. Whereas with the like yeah. with the Vectra, you've got the Vectra S S two, the yeah. M two, and the L two, small, medium, and large. Yeah, yeah, true, true. So yeah, anyway, um, how do you? Uh, and the uh, next question is, how do I uh, lower my phosphate? Been tumbling Fozzy X for a week and seen a 0 0.02 drop using my recommended dose for my tank. So Fuzzy X, I use that. Nice Fuzzy X. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I really like it, but it's not very strong. Yeah. Roafoss is much stronger in my experience. So you need a lot of it. And that's actually a good thing because you don't want to put in a ton and strip out all your phosphate straight away, but it is a gradual process. And this is like the one thing about the smart tester. Sorry. The one thing about regularly testing phosphate is that it, it gives you that map. So it tests yeah. you test for automatic every day. So you, you can you can switch to something more aggressive like uh, carbon dosing or um, Roafos. But I would just keep doing it. Just use more. <laughs> yeah. Put more in. Yeah. It's surprising how much you need, actually. Just be uh, careful. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the final question is, I have no room for a, for a refugium or algae reactor. How do I bring my nitrates down currently at 50? Have you got a fos a um not uh protein skimmer? Because if you've got a protein skimmer, I'd be to carbon dosing. Okay, I would do a water change. <laughs> I would work out. I mean, I don't know if you're feeding yeah, quite a lot. Well, think about it. If it's fifty, they have to take out. I don't know how big this tank is, but they have to take out half the water to bring it down to twenty-five, and then half the water and again to bring it down to twelve. Oh, so you got to do two water changes. And, boo hoo. <laughs> yeah, but this could be a thousand liter tank. Yeah. So. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. But I, I so I, I would do water changes with, with. I would, I would work out the source because fifty is quite high. It's not yeah. so high that I'd be thinking, God, this is a nightmare. But it, I, I wouldn't want my nitrates to be that high. No. But I would work out the source. So you might be feeding too much. You might be, you haven't got enough filtration. Um, but also check your, um, your, your source water. So when you mix up a batch of water, batch of water for your water changes, and I hope you do water changes, then uh, test that for nitrate. See what it is. Sometimes. Brand new, mix up some brand new salt water. You'll be surprised at what the phosphate and nitrate is. It's not zero <laughs> on a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. Like the tra traffic marine one. Some someone on Ultimate Reef posted about this. Um, they posted their <coughs> excuse me their results, and the phosphate was like 0.14. It was really high. And yeah. then everybody started testing, and they were like, "Oh my god, yeah, you're not kidding." It was really, it was a lot. <coughs> um, but yeah, so test your your, your source water because if you've got if you're buying your water from a local fish shop for example then maybe they're not uh, as diligent 
with their DI resin as you would be if you had your own filter. Right. Or maybe your DI resin needs changing. Uh, so those are the member questions. Just quickly, I remembered yep. something. Um, and you, you literally just reminded me then. Do you remember how last week we discussed um, using a piping, um, yeah. you know, like a cake for piping the, thing, DI resin, yeah, icing yeah. for DI resin? It basically works. <laughs> I guess it? it Yes, I didn't use the like. So all I did was I cut a hole in the bag, but they're about the same size as a piping bag, and then just squeeze it through. No, it would normally take me a few minutes to fill up each one. It, it filled up in like ten seconds. I was like, "This is how I'm doing it from now on." But then you've got a hole in your DI resin bag. Well, I use so much of it, so I use literally okay. like five liters of it at a oh, time. Well, okay. So and then then all I do is I put that bag, anything that's left, into a. Um, a resealable um, plastic can take like like a sandwich bag. Yeah. So there you go. Help. I fixed everyone's problems. This is my most annoying job. <laughs> you fixed your own problem. Well, I didn't <laughs> fix it. Someone in the comments told me what to do. This is true. Uh, I can't remember who it was actually, but um, anyway. So next up is the Facebook group. So there are a few things on the Facebook group. One of them I was going to do was a news article. But when I went through today to see which post had the most reach, this was right up there. Okay. And this is, uh, you remember our friend, the Yerple Tang? We seem to talk about the Yerple Tang a lot. I don't know why, because it's the ugliest fish. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, <laughs> but I find us, I find that we talk about it almost like every week. It's like, why? But anyway, our friend, the Yerple Tang from Abyss. Now, this, those, that photo there. So I obviously I did a video on this fish. Yeah. And it looked like that when I went there. I wouldn't yeah. even be surprised if that was, um, screenshots from my video but uh, it must have grown since then unless yeah. this is another one but anyway abyss uh, aquatics are, uh, are selling in manchester are selling their yerple tank you know how much so it? someone commented saying so, it was six grand oh i saw someone comment saying it was three grand so oh, really? where, whereas originally it was meant to be like 10 grand so i was wondering yeah but either oh, way no no 3k yeah so so ian stafford says to be fair i was expecting them to be asking for 3k no, no, no. He, he, he's not saying that is. I, someone said, I can't remember where it was, but so, I saw someone say it was six grand. But who knows? Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't actually, I haven't, I haven't checked <clears throat> properly. They, they've got a black tang, I think they meant he's, they're somewhere. So, yeah, it says he lives with a black tang and a, and a flame angel. Um, if that black tang wasn't absolutely massive, I'd probably take it. <laughs> if it wasn't absolutely yeah. massive, and I think 1,600 pounds, I'd probably take it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> I've, I've seen it, it's huge. I want a little yeah. one. I did a video on their display tank, and it's in that it's in that display tank. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've definitely seen it. Yeah. Right. Um, but there you go. So if you've got six grand, roughly, burning a hole in your pocket, yeah, then you can go and buy a a yerple tank, a brown tank. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's, it basically is like a a um a scopas tank, isn't it? <laughs> like the like that sort of. It's better than a scopas tank. Barely. But I Barely. still I still hold out this hope that it's going to be this perfect. <laughs> yeah bright yellow fins everywhere yeah thick deep purple body well it, do, it but, does have um the tail and the per and the pectoral fins are yellow um which is the same as what a purple tang is the only yeah. difference is you that you would want to have the purple tang's body but the the top and bottom yeah, fins. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, weird, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway you've ruined it now yeah um anyway <laughs> The next thing was, uh, and this this is a weird one. Some so sometimes certain posts get um, a load of reach, and there's no real reason. Mm -hmm. This was a question from Mark Swan, who said, "Question: Do I need crabs in my tank, as they're now attacking all my corals? All no, my corals, pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah. I hate so crabs. I, I don't know if they were hermits or what, but if they're attacking all of the corals, yeah, that makes me wonder if there's something wrong with the corals. Because when corals get attacked by whatever creature." Yeah. It's often because they're unhealthy, but no, you're, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Crabs or hermit crabs, or whatever, are a pain in the ass. They're cool, hermits in particular. Yeah, but you absolutely don't need them. One hundred percent, do not need them. No, I tend to prefer snails. Yeah, <laughs> but sometimes hermits are so cool, I can't resist them. No, not but, for me. Uh, not not but, worth it. Snails have <laughs> snails are better at eating algae. They breed in your tank, so you have a continuous Free supply of them, yeah. and they don't kill other creatures. <laughs> so yeah. What, what more can you want? <laughs> this is very true. Um, but yeah, so there you go. No, you don't need crabs. <laughs> uh, 
Um, and there was there's so there's a guy who's currently this this these posts didn't get much uh, in the way of reach, but there's a guy. This guy is currently in the Maldives, and yeah. he's posting loads of videos of um, of corals like this, uh, which is cool. But then they're, they're not getting massive reach, but uh, they're there. So if you want to go and see some uh, diving type photos, scuba diving uh, videos, sorry. They haven't got that blue pop. That's why they're not getting loads of... If yeah. you saw that under blue lights... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everyone did. One of them. This is true. Um, next one. And this is... <laughs> this is 872, the reach of this one was. Uh, and this is... I, again, the danger is that anyone posts this, they're going to get... Um, it'll, well, I'll have to read it out, basically. A delivery from Prestige Reef. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> but... This is not just a shameless plug for the UK. Although I do like shameless plugs. Coral selling website. Yeah, indeed. But this guy actually had a story. So he would bought 21 uh, frags of the same coral. Yes. Uh, it was at Monte Stellata. And uh, it was uh, yeah. for an experiment. Yeah. He uh, uh, he contacted me and, and it was a bit of a weird request because he said, can I have a mystery box? Like three of them or more than three actually would have been before. But with all the same coral. And, well, and that's not a mystery box, but you know. well, and well, no, well, it didn't matter to me. He wanted yeah, no. he, like, to be fair, it's for it was for this project, so he wanted, um, because he, 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 he was buying so many, it was about a bulk deal basically. Yeah. Um, and he just said, Can I have some frags which are all relatively the same size? Um, originally, he asked me my opinion, he said, What would be the fastest growing, like, fluorescent, interesting coral that I've got? Um, and that was the one I came up with. Um, it'll be interesting to see what, because uh, it's, it's to do with um, lighting, isn't it? Well, yeah, what he says, he's looking into the, the effects of light spectrum on growth and fluorescent protein production. So th this isn't this isn't someone at their, someone's house. This I'm not going to say where it was sent to. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say where it was sent to, but it, it actually has gone to a zoology department of a of like a an educational facility. Mm. So... I don't know if I'm allowed to say. I'll be honest with you. I can't remember yeah. where they prompt to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But there you go. That was interesting. Yeah. So yeah. You, you you are participating in. You're feeding research into yeah. science experiment. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll go with that. Yeah. And the the last one that was uh, the last one I want to pull up. Reach of seven hundred and fifty three. Um, and this was from Daniel Luke, double first name, like it. Who's, uh, who says, anyone else just let their corals grow into each other? I know I should trim them, but the, I think they look so much more natural. That's not a great photo because it's taken at an angle, so it's kind of yeah. distorted by the glass. But the point is, is that a Monty? I think they're, they're both Montys. It's a Toja it, and a... Yeah, I was wondering what type of Monty that is. It but... looks a bit weird, but I think that... Yeah. But anyway, that, but the point is, do you, do you, does, any, does anyone else let their corals grow into each other? They look more natural. They absolutely do, 100%. And I love that. Um, I love letting corals colonies grow out. And I kind of there are times when I like letting them do battle and just like you know what, if they touch each other <laughs> and one of them doesn't like it, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just that's it. And it's kind of cool to see nature. But at other times, you'll have a really nice SPS coral, and you're like, yeah. I'm not letting anything touch that. <laughs> yeah. 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 So you do little bonsai work. I am definitely <laughs> guilty of letting anyone who's seen the pictures on my Instagram account will know that I'm definitely guilty of letting corals all grow into each other. Yeah. But that comes down to laziness, if I'm honest. But the side effect of it is that it does look very good. It does look cool. Does look um, good. He's right. <clears throat> what, what, actually, what I've done on the water box tank, I think I mentioned this before, um, I've got lots of little frags of the same coral to let them all grow into each other because I like the, it, it'll create, it'll, they'll grow much faster because the smaller yes. the coral is, the faster it grows. Um, and it will, it also will fill in this. It, it like, it defines the space of where that coral is going to be. So I don't put anything else there. Cause I, I think I want to have larger colonies, not the huge mm. ones, but colonies that are like this big rather than having that space and like six or seven frags in it. <laughs> yeah. So I just thought from the very beginning, I'm going to have defined areas. Um, there you go. Several frags of the same thing. Yes. As long as you put saying, together. Sorry. I was just saying, basically, people buy six corals of the same piece from me rather than yeah, one. Exactly. That's Ryan's <laughs> advice. Um, but if the trouble is, so I've done that before and I've put, I've, like, Tropic Thunder is the best example. Yes. I put it in three places. Yeah. And then you've just got three of the bastards and it's like, all over. It's just like, oh, God. But as in, like, separately. So it just, it looks yeah. Weird. Um, excuse me. Um, and push button really says apologies for being like you've just missed answering all your questions. I'm afraid all of them. 
but you can wind back. Uh, so that is, that's it. We've, we've rattled through everything, more or less. So, uh, and actually, just a quick question from Abs, who says, how come you don't have much Aquapora for sale? Yeah, why don't you keep Acros? My lifestyle yeah. doesn't suit it, or didn't suit it, is the honest answer. Um, so, obviously, I was going to America for sometimes six weeks at a time, and leaving the and the farm would run itself, um, where everything was dosing, and I could I, everything was tested remotely, and I could, had cameras in there, and my neighbor would come in once a day just to feed the fish a very specific amount. So I knew exactly uh, the farm could run for six weeks without me. I don't know if a farm if the farm can run for six weeks without me with acros. Because <laughs> even with that, you've you've found a couple of times, although everything's all measured out and you've got the theory perfect, yeah, yeah. you got yeah. back a couple of times and your nitrates are through the roof or your fossils. Yeah, are definitely. The floor. Yeah. I had it where so. someone <clears throat> someone put the whole pot of fish food in and that was over a four day period. Oops. So I don't want the farm to absolutely run my life, is the honest answer. Yeah. And I think that with acros, and although some people like acros. The majority of people don't want them. That is, nice. it's, as, it's as simple as that. There is like a hierarchy, like a triangle. Um, and I don't do this triangle very well. The bottom bit, most people want the soft corals. That, that like, really? I, well, LPS corals are the nicest looking, and the people that are are willing to get into the, like to risk it will go right. for LPS corals. But the nervous people, which is what people, which is a lot of people who first get into it, are nervous. Yeah, completely, yeah. And My they think, oh. There is a mentality where, and I had this myself, where they go, firstly, they go, I'm never going to have corals. Too difficult to keep. I'm only going to have fish. And then, and I did this myself, and then they get bored. <laughs> and they go, I might just add just some green star polyps. And it starts to grow. So then they get some toadstools mm, and some finger corals and yeah. clove polyps. So I don't do the the soft corals as well as I probably should. I definitely could make more money if I um, catered for that side of the market more um, because people are asking me all the time. The reason I don't do them very well is because they're a pain in the ass. Like mushrooms come off the plugs. Um, Toadstools, yeah. if you cut you cut them up and then you have to wait for them to stick to something, you can't glue them. They, they do their own thing. Um, so... The S, uh, LPS are the uh, are relatively easy to propagate and sell to people, so that's where I sort of specialised most. Yeah. And then uh, the SPS tank is actually the easiest one for me, anyway. I, I genuinely believe that. Yeah, it's the the easier SPS corals, Montipora and things like that, which is what the majority of SPS keepers want. Um, that tank is much easier to run than the LPS tank, definitely. Okay, that's interesting. I don't, I'm not sure what it is. In what way? When, when, you, when you say, is that because you get a lot of um, wild LBS in and wild corals are a bit more fiddly than? Uh, possibly. The okay. Let's put this way. I can't remember the touch wood. Touch wood. The last time I lost a like an SPS colony, like like I literally okay. cannot remember the last. You say you yeah. can. Well, yeah, your tank or for me? Yeah, mine, bastard. Oh, Trip. I can't remember. So, so things like Montipora don't don't die that often if you if your water premise are, are right mm -hmm. um whereas when i get corals in from you might get a wall uh no a wall hammer coral they pretty regularly come in and all of a sudden it dies and you're like okay yeah. and then that thing then spreads to something else <laughs> you can't yeah. help that really you can dip it in um cipro flux is in yeah i bet yeah. i bet that's bacterial <clears throat> yeah so whereas you, you don't really get bacterial infections with some of the easier SPS corals I've found. No, okay. So um, they cut, they cut, there's less, I find there's less pests with um, SPS corals I've found with the easier ones, maybe because a lot of them I've been propagating for 14 years now. So yeah. I've dealt with anything I came with. Whereas every time I get new LPS in, there's a possibility of flatworms, flatworms on, or, or yeah. whatever. <laughs> so I promise you the LPS tray is definitely more trouble than the SPS tray. Mm, interesting. So, um, okay. Uh, I can't remember why we started talking about that, but we do have next, we have the Prestige Reef Fishing Car of the Week. Have you? Are we, we're speeding up, are we? Do you, yeah, yeah. We've got some stuff to talk about. Have um, you got them? Yeah. Fish of the Week, uh, painted frogfish. <laughs> I just like the look of them. They are, they're, they're one of those fish which is so ugly that it's kind of cute. <laughs> 
Um, so painted frogfish is coming up with loads of types, but these are not what I They're have. They're all different mind. colors. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. They come in all that's different the colors. sort of one that I have. Yeah, that's, mind, like that's the one. Red. Yes. <clears throat> Ugly bastards, aren't they? Look yeah, at that one. That's, Look at that one with the blue one, with the yellow. Blue and uh, yellow. It's, it's down one and then to the left, or it might be to the right for you. This up. guy. Oh, that. No, up. That one, yes. That is cool. Mm. Well, that's I think cool. that's the juvenile. So it probably changes color as it gets older. Yeah, it's just, but look at this one. <laughs> oh, that, well, that looks like an adult one. Punched in the face. <laughs> it's disgusting. It looks like one of those orc things in um, in Lord of the Rings, like the big ugly things. They've got like yeah. a sword stuck through their head. <laughs> now you saw one of these today, didn't you? Yesterday at Reefkeeper yes. Moss End. Yeah, yeah. What was it? Which one? Uh, it was one of these little. It was like it was like this one, but it was it had red instead of that horrible. And it was quite cool. It was like an inch inch or smaller, and it was kind of cool. I did go over and I was like, oh, he's cool, but I still don't want it. And yeah, it's cool until it starts eating all of your fish. <laughs> yeah, in fact, it was like this. That's what it was like, tiny. But they're just yeah. so ugly. Um, inappropriate Urukai, reef had one. It, had one for a long time, I think. Um, it was called Mochi. I, I'm pretty sure it's called, <laughs> called Mochi. He had one, and that was one of the most um, riveting co uh, tank builds because he used to feed it live fish. He used to feed it damsel fish, you know, the yellow-tailed damsels, and he would put, I, 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 I can't remember exactly, but he would put a few in, like three in, and then the and then the frogfish obviously would eat them. And then for one, for some reason, one day, there was a very specific fish which looked identical to all the other ones. It just didn't eat. And it was, <laughs> they were together for ages. It was, they were together for so long. He named, he named the fish. <laughs> I think what happened was the, it was slightly too big to eat at first. So the frogfish didn't eat it. And then as the right. frogfish got oh, I bigger, remember that. Or, yeah, I think you've talked about it before. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As the frogfish got bigger, it, ne it still didn't realize that it could eat it. And it never did. Friends. Yeah. Yeah. So I've just found a better picture of a frogfish, actually. Nice. Nice. <laughs> I used to tune in every, every time you did one of those, those tank bills, I used to tune, tune in literally just to, to see if it'd been eaten. If it'd been eaten. <laughs> yeah. Did BRS do a video this week? <clears throat> mm, kind of. I didn't see it. It's in the it's in the news section, so oh, we'll, we'll come on to it. Okay. <clears throat> uh, and I don't have a car of the week, really. Like I was going to do an encrusting Gorgonian, um, which you can put up that. It's a bit encrusting Gorgonian. It's, it's on my website. It's pink star polyps because people think that they're the same as um, uh, they're the same as green star polyps, but it is actually a Gorgonian. I've... Okay. Is it uh, Ethropodium caribor car Caribarium. <laughs> that was the first. It was the very first coral I ever got fifteen years ago. Oh, really? Yeah. I've never heard of encrusting gorgs. I have no idea why I got it. If you look at it, it's like it's, it's like the same color as, as the rock. That's um, like every now and then my cat is sick and it looks like that. <laughs> nice. Well, that that was my very very first coral. I don't know why because there's so many other nice corals, but someone obviously the owner of the shop probably said to me this was easy. S this won't die. Yeah. Yeah. This definitely won't die. And to be fair, it grows like crazy. So, so yeah. That is the worst coral of the week you've ever had. <laughs> I, it's interesting because people think it's the same as a cream star pollen. It's not the worst coral of the week. <laughs> it bloody is. Name a worse one. I mean, okay, true. Yeah. True. <laughs> true. That is a, a green star polyp, that bad boy. Yeah. Oh, dear. So, Very disappointing. But, people um, quite often buy both of them together. <laughs> Well, when on my website, they'll buy the green star polyps and the pink star polyps. And the reason they're labeled pink star polyps, because if I put pink Gorgonian, people will, won't buy it. Whereas if they so think you it's lie same, to people, to not get lying them to people, buy it. They, okay. people are worried are about Gorgonians. The truth? <laughs> people are worried about Gorgonians and there's lots of common names for corals. Yeah, 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 completely. Because <clears throat> there's no reason to be scared of it. <laughs> someone, well, someone just said that, that Gorgonian is bastard to get rid of. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> I keep finding bits cropping up worse than Tropic Thunder. Oh, God, Tropic Thunder. Yeah. Ah, we need to move on quickly. Right. Yeah. And because we're moving on, we are moving on to the news. And I have very exciting news to start with. Okay. There is, uh, I think there's, you know, Mr. Beast is probably the best YouTuber in the world. Okay, I'll give you that. Number two, Reef Dog, right? Oh, yeah, definitely, yes. Yeah. And the number two YouTuber in the world 
has this week launched an Etsy store. So you very, can now... That is big news. It's <laughs> very big news. You can now buy 3D printed designs from Reef Talk. Uh, and it is... Can There's I see... a link... There's Bring those up again, quick. I, I, oh, okay. I, I, I didn't actually have a look at what they were. Well, I'm going to show you some of them, the physical things. Oh, okay, fine. So basically, a lot of them are, are test kit holders and that sort of thing. Yeah. But they're things that I've I've designed for myself. For example, I want I had um, I have the Hanna nitrate, phosphate, and alkalinity test kits. Yeah. And I hate the Hanna boxes; they're massive. They're pain. I just want yeah. everything all in one place. So I designed my own one that holds all of them. And there are a couple of other things I wanted you, with cuvettes. When you've when you finished, you've got to go and rinse them, haven't you? And I always used to leave yeah. them by the sink to let them dry. So I wanted a built-in drying rack. And I also wanted a built-in place to store scissors to cut the, the sachets. Yeah. And a built-in place to store my syringe, because I always leave leave that line around. So I made this. And there you this go. Is that. So there's you, uh we'll do the opposite one for that. One sec. You've got yeah, so I gave you one of these a while I've ago got, as well. I've got my one. There you go. See? got a special white oh yeah i got a white one i was a bit disappointed it wasn't black but i didn't want to say anything so, <laughs> you can I, buy yeah. one in black off the website so. prestige reef on it yeah yeah you got personalized uh, yeah don't I, i'm not doing personalized it's, yeah. what was so you rent you dry your ones of these so uh, no 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 so i used to i used to before i uh, made that i yeah. used to uh, rinse them in the tap and then i'd leave them to dry on the yeah. side of the kitchen because not in the in the box, you have to put the lid back on, don't you? And then they don't dry properly. Yeah. No, well, I fill mine with water. Oh, okay. Tap water or RO? RO water. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. the reason I don't clean them and then put them back is because then it sometimes leaves residue on them, especially if you're doing it with tap water. But I see that's the thing. I've, I've found if you do it this way, you yeah. never get residue on it. It's interesting. And I've not got special water in it. But there yeah. are various other things on there anyway as well so if you just have a nitrate test kit for example color coded matchy matchy how's that very exciting End with the drying rack if you've got salafert test kits color coded <laughs> this is why you gave me a shameless plug earlier isn't it because normally we no, don't I'm... advertise <laughs> <laughs> exactly and the You're last like, thing i got oh sorry no, no that's fine the last uh, last thing I... so there aren't many... there's only seven designs on there at the moment there'll be there'll be more i'm working on i've got others that I've, I think are, are ready to go up. But yeah. the other thing I really like, these little, uh, to show you a grey one instead, they're grey and they're grey or black. They're Zoa rocks, basically. Oh, they're rocks. Just... Oh. Come on, focus. Uh, they're not, it's, not, it's not a rock, it's not literally a rock. It's, yeah, yeah. It's printed, but it's just they, a Zoa or whatever coral sits in there and then it doesn't spread. They're brilliant. I keep, I've got loads of them in my tank. They're fantastic. Um, and they, they look relatively natural. <laughs> yeah. And then they stop your zoas from disappearing everywhere and taking over your entire rock work and so on. I use them for uh, other things. I've got a bubble coral that's just on there because otherwise it just flops on the side as well. Yeah. They're wicked. Once so, they get coral and algae on them as well, or just normal algae, you won't even notice them. This is very true. But there you go. So there is a prestige, oh, sorry, prestige reef, a reef dork Etsy store yeah. uh, from which you can now buy um, cool 3D printed aquarium stuff. There you go. So, so that is that. big news. <laughs> that is big news. Unfortunately, David Govek, I can't ship to the USA at the moment. I'll work on that. I want to make it uh, build. I'm going to build up over here, and then I'll work on that uh, uh, that later. And I'm not shipping to the the to Europe either at the moment. But that will change. All you need is someone with a 3D printer in America that can print them off for you. But then, if I the trouble is, if I I've got to trust them with my design, so I give them my yeah. design, and then I've got to trust that they won't use it themselves or so no you know what 3d printing is like someone will, someone will nick that by next week and then make their own well you can try nicking that but <laughs> but anyway and this is that's the thing with 3d printing there's a lot of there, there there's there are big libraries of, of digital files online yeah and there are lots of people who will just take files from that library and print them i don't do that i don't like that i think i think i think technically it's not illegal but it's it's got to be some kind of frowned copyright upon copyright theft or patent theft or whatever um but it's just i just don't like it I'd, I'd rather make your own and if you make your own stuff you can come up with little improvements that make things better so it's not just a it doesn't just hold your test gears it's also got a drying rack or it's got a space for your syringe or these sorts of things so but anyway there we go so you can now buy from uh from uh from etsy and this is there, there will come a time when there's a, a reef talk website 
and that's when we stop being friends. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but uh, that's that's in the future because setting up a website is difficult, too difficult. So yeah, it's hard enough. Yeah, yeah. Just take your time. Take your time. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's not importing cars. Actually, yeah, that's a good idea. Anyway. Good luck. <laughs> that, was, that took me years to be able to do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you yeah, and you you started during um, COVID as well, didn't you? Say so. yeah, and yeah, I got, I obviously got a pet shop license as well, so it wasn't there. Uh, and they, so the government comes over. I, your, the government will come over and look at your tank, and I'm like, "How is this a pet shop?" <laughs> yeah, it's a weird pet shop. <laughs> True. Um, but moving on from Reef Dog news, uh, we have I think is it next Friday, Blue Friday. Do you know what Blue Friday is? Oh, someone has said something. Just someone has commented about looks like a printed version of Fish of Hex. Sounds like printed reefs ripoff of the resin packing kit from Fish of Hex. Oh, yeah, that oh, was something we else we talking about it, last yes. week. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. My designs are not ripoffs. <laughs> I'll no. tell you that much. Um, but yeah, so if you, do you know what Blue Friday is? Uh, is it to do with Amazon? No. No, no, I don't, it's, I don't know. It's to do with Waterbox. The oh waterbox. yeah yes i do yeah <laughs> november the 6th it's coming up in a few weeks time yeah they've got this it's blue friday is that it's like their black friday basically but they, yeah. and they do this event where there are various giveaways they're giving away i thought it was a five thousand uh, dollar gift card but it looks like it's two two and a half thousand i'm sure it was, i'm sure there was one five thousand one anyway, they're giving away loads of stuff um <clears throat> excuse me and they're also doing um uh, <clears throat> uh all sorts of basic loads of stuff they're doing discounts they're doing uh, giveaways they're doing all sorts of fun stuff so that is coming up in a few weeks time ah this is i, I think this is one from 2020 from the looks of it so that's why it's so but it's it's coming up in a, a couple of weeks time and it's uh, if you want a water box you probably want to wait until blue friday because you'll get a discount yeah and you can enter they do this thing where you can enter um for the for the five thousand dollar gift card and you um uh you, you can get as many entries as you want basically so you if you share it on instagram that's another entry if you share it on facebook that's another entry and all these sorts of things so they get you to do your marketing for them do you have a favorite tank, tank you, have a you have a water oh, yeah. you have a red have a sink and you have a cake yeah 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 so do you have a favorite one <sighs> i really like the cabinet of the cade <laughs> rock solid okay i I really like the height, the dimensions of the water box. <laughs> That's good. It's, it's a shallow one, though, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. The, the, I don't think I have a favorite. Actually, I've, uh, I don't I know. One hundred. I've had loads of tanks. I've probably over the years, I've probably owned like fifteen like display tanks. Obviously, some of them were just being bought from other people, and then sold on. The water box is the best tank I've ever had. A hundred percent. But I think that's because it's it's a top end water box. It's also yeah, it is also the biggest one. Like it's yeah. also what like it. So it's hard to compare a thousand liter tank with a four hundred liter tank. I guess yeah, because the quality I, of build is different. Yeah. There, and that's the thing. Because there, there, there are two tanks. I'm looking at um, upgrading at some point. It's going to happen now. I think I'm pretty yeah, sure. Be, yeah. <laughs> and there there are a couple of tanks I'm looking at. One is in a water box Infinia Reef, six foot. I can't remember what it's called two fifty yeah. point six or whatever. Uh, and that's three grand. And then the other one is a Red Sea Reefer 850S, and that's five grand. Actually, okay. if you look on paper, same uh, size, same thickness glass, yeah. all uh, all very similar. But the the Red Sea, when you look in it a bit closer, you can see why the Red Sea one is more expensive. It just there's the plumbing's uh, better thought out, and there's various things. But I don't think that if you compare like for like, yeah, they're all pretty much the same. There are there are, there are good things and bad things about all of them. Yeah um but the the if you get if you get a tank that's cost five grand it's gonna be a nice tank <laughs> that is true yeah, yeah i'll give you that i can tell you that for free but no i would i would the only I, I really like the cade peninsula tanks but i don't like the cade normal ones this is great but they've all got a, a, a freshwater reservoir built into the back yeah so oh. they're six they're 70 centimeters front to back yeah but 10 centimeters of that is the freshwater reservoir now on the small tank that works brilliantly does it you yeah, can't yeah, you, you can't see when it's run out. I assume you can. There's a little window at the bottom. How is it? Yeah, but so that works great on that. But when it's when it's a big one, if you've yeah. got a four foot tank, it means you've got a four foot tank with a four foot freshwater reservoir. And I don't. I, if I've got a tank that's seventy centimeters front to back, I want that all to be display tank. 
<clears throat> but for some some people will love that. It's just I don't particularly like it. Yeah. But the peninsula ones don't have that, and their peninsula tanks are really nice. Anyway. But I, I wouldn't I wouldn't get another peninsula. Went off on a tangent. <laughs> I know. Yeah, gone off on a tangent. Um. Anyway, okay. So that is uh, that's Blue Friday coming up, and this is I meant to talk about this last week. Planet Earth three. The David Attenborough thing is is coming back. It's, that's tonight, uh, think, isn't it? I think it started. I think it starts tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and there, there will be uh, a reefing, a reef, well, not reefing. Like that. <laughs> He's not coming around to my house. Yeah, uh, but there'll be one on coral reefs at some point. So watch out for that. BBC One, probably. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh, set, set the, go and find it. I think it's. I love not, how accurate the news section is. BBC One, probably. Well, this, oh, that was one thing from last week. So last week we talked a little bit about um, there was a new light that you were really excited about. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I said it was. Um, I said I think I said it was half twice as powerful and as a Radeon, and the same price or something like that. And I got corrected in the comments. Telegram, cheers, because I I didn't really read it. And you're not the type to go. Oh, hang on a second, Alex. Let's talk more about the lights. <laughs> no, I'm not. But more interesting, Telegram watch. He watches this, does he? <laughs> yeah, listen. yeah, yeah. From time to time, but. Uh, so, but the reef breeders is is not as cheap as I thought it was, basically. Uh, but anyway, that's the correction on that. But uh, yeah, standard accuracy from this. Uh, two more things in the news. One of them, remember we talked about the uh, hybrid tang last week. There was a mustard tang and yes. something yeah. else. The photos were pretty uninspiring. Yes, there are better photos now. Are they? I haven't seen them. This is from uh, John Clipperton, I think, who is uh, Ultramarine uh, magazine photographer. Okay, it still looks a little bit. And like it's it's unwell <laughs> okay but yeah. that's a much better photo right no <laughs> what that's 10 times better uh, it's a, like, don't get me wrong it's a better photo it doesn't look like that much nicer of a fish as far no. as I'm concerned. you can see it better than you could in the other fit well, actually photo. to be fair it, it's growing on me even okay. in like the last sort of Three couple seconds. of couple of seconds it because it is that even the same fish well it must be yeah, that looks very different to the other one. That actually looks it, it looks more unique there. But having just two bands, for example, and those and the spots are obviously massive on it. So it's far more unique than the other one looked. Are you trying to find the picture of the other one? No. Oh, I thought that's what you're doing. I'm trying to find uh, the link for my Etsy shop because someone's asking and I've now just posted it in the uh, in the chat. <laughs> there you go. Um hashtag yeah. shame, shameless uh, advertising. And I've I've got the uh, the thing wrong, so I've just posted it again. Um, but no, that's uh, I that that that's that, that, that. It's still not. I still prefer the the standard one. What are you doing, mine? What are you typing? Nothing. Prestigereef.co.uk. That's exactly what. <laughs> the comment has but, failed to post. Why have you? You, can't, you can't post link. YouTube doesn't let you post links. Why have if you, you blocked post, me? I haven't blocked you. But if you post a link in yeah. any comment to any video, YouTube yeah. will block it. If oh. so, if you post, lots of people say, check out my video. And then you'll think that I've deleted it. It usually yeah, yeah. blocks links to everything. They just don't, oh. doesn't allow it. Didn't so, block your Etsy link though, did it? Well, it's because me, it knows that I think it's all right. Oh, I see how it is. <laughs> but anyway, um, in fact, I can delete the first one. Okay. Uh, but yeah, there we go. So uh, so the, the, that fish does look slightly better, but it's still not the most exciting fish in the world. And the next piece of news, the next item of news, and this is, uh, so you asked if um, BRS did a, uh, a video this week. Yeah, they did. It was with a guy called Clam Mania, <laughs> who is a clam expert. Basically, he keeps and sells clams. Really good at it, and uh, it was really interesting. I would highly recommend watching. Oh, really? It was one of those ones where it was a reef palooza or whatever, and he's just on stage talking to someone. So it's not a proper, yeah, proper yeah. in inverted yeah. commas, fifty-two weeks of reefing video. Um, but it was just it was and it was one it's an hour long so you've got to really want to to watch them because you know it's not it's not five minutes of punchy information but it was really good and i learned a lot about clams clams are cool the guy reckons that crocea clams are actually the easiest everyone always says it's durassa because yeah. they require low light he reckons that crocea are hardier it's just they need quite strong light okay are you do you do you get do clams do anything for you don't get me wrong. I love I love a, I love a clam as much as the next man, <laughs> but oh. <laughs> um, I have had Durassa, Durassa clams and Maxima clams. Um, do they do anything for me? 
look, they're interesting. I don't, I, I have had them before to sell, um, but not. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put them high up on my list of of things that I like. If you see what I mean. Okay, I really like them. Why don't you have one? I, I, I've had a few. Oh. I did. I had one in my water box, a Durasa, really nice, but it was getting a bit too big. That's the trouble; they get big. <laughs> I mean, yeah. everything does. Yeah, yeah. But you can't frag. You can frag an aqua, and it's smaller. You yeah, can't frag true. a clam. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember what I had. I had what I had a. It was an ugly brown one, but it was one of the ones that gets absolutely massive. I think it's like a. It's Chica. like a, yes, I think that's what it was. Um, it came. Like, there was a tank breakdown. Oh no, it was, it was actually the tank that burst, and I took loads of stuff. And I just happened to take this clam as well. And one of my customers boy, but it was just brown. So, but they <laughs> okay. liked it because it was massive. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I like the idea of having clams in my next tank, uh, but I just learned lots of lots about them. It's really interesting. So I, I I've never liked giving clams lots of flow, and he was like, "It's fine. Don't worry about it. They're, they're cool." Yeah. <laughs> um, there were a couple of other things, but it was interesting. But you probably won't like it because it's clams. <laughs> no, I don't like. Don't get me wrong. I, if it's something that's actually interesting, I'll watch it. It doesn't matter what it's on. It wouldn't matter if it was on algae. I'd still watch it. If yeah. it's on, if it's on equipment, though, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, so that's uh, that's clam mania, and the last thing in the news. Oh, better photos of the hybrid tank. Yeah, we've already shown you that. So, uh, some some news, but not a massive amount of news, and that concludes the news. Which means, and uh, can't I can't think follows up and says Crosea are absolutely hardier in the right light which is the whole point this guy was saying they need a lot of light uh like i think it was like 400 par or something like that um <clears throat> reef dog your full name is on the page is that intentional uh it's on the facebook page as well it's not i, I don't think you can change it i think you i think it has to be there but that's fine <laughs> i don't tend to put my full name around but no not even on your email address <laughs> No, no, yeah, yeah. Your email annoying thing, so it's Alex James, isn't it? The annoying yeah. thing, I, I set it up originally, I don't know, five, six years ago. I went, I joined Facebook again, having deleted it. Yeah. And I set myself up as Alex James because I just wanted an anonymity. I didn't want all my mates to be like, I just wanted to be on it to join groups. And then um, I tried, I can't, now I can't work out how to change it. <laughs> well, and this led to a, a it definitely backfires, you, doesn't it? it? <laughs> well, yeah, well, not for me. <laughs> I, I got Alex a custom made wedding present because I'm that kind of nice guy. Um, and it, ha it had, you know, Mr. and Mrs. and then the surname on. Now, I got the surname off his email, which is James, and James is not his surname. <laughs> so I had to buy that present twice. <laughs> yeah. And it was personalized. So it's not it was personalized. Yeah. So <laughs> I need, if, if there's, actually, I don't even have any more of the other, the other ones. So it doesn't matter. But I was just, I was going to hold on to the other one until I met someone who was Mr. and Mrs. James. Get, they get married. And then, so, yeah. yeah. So when they get married, I can then, you know, give it to them. Well, I'd known you for a good couple of years at that point. Yeah, but what you can you expect? I didn't know your last name. It's on my. It's my. It's the name of my email. Did you? Do you know my last? Don't say it out loud because people will start googling me. But you, you do know. Yeah. You, you do know. Yeah. Oh, fine. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Yeah, but yeah. I don't think about these things, do I? <laughs> uh, no. But anyway, whatever. You're lucky. You like. You're lucky. It was even personal because, as I said, it wasn't me. You know, it wasn't me who got it. <laughs> so yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if if but... I was left down to it, you probably would have got like. Some prestige reef gift cards, <laughs> and just some admin, some Etsy admin. Uh, Chris Kenny says he went to buy the the Hal Hannah Alcalinity tester, but it sold out. So there was, I think, there was one left before I came on tonight. So that's obviously just been scooped up. There will be more, um, but watch this space. Um, Alex, can you get a, a a holder for three Hannah checkers? Oh, I think you're saying that. I think that's the same question. Anyway. Um, Time to time for you to make your programs into a podcast. Well, it kind of is a podcast, but it's not really. They are, aren't they? Uh, we, I upload them as a podcast. A, different, a live stream is like this when it's a video and it's a conversation. A yeah. podcast is not recorded live. A proper podcast doesn't, it, it's just, it's recorded. It can be video, but it can just be a conversation. And it's just recorded and you normally release the audio. So a lot of podcasts have video as well, yeah. But um, it it is it is a different vibe, and it's it's. But I like the I like the live chat as much. Yeah, as really. yeah. No, I, I'm happy with this. But yeah. Uh, anyway, that means we're going to move on to. And I have to make a note of the time: one oh four thirty eight. The headline topic, which is Prestige Reef Method. 
So this is there is how... no prestige reef method. Just to <laughs> clarify, this is something that you've invented literally today. <laughs> Without telling you, I invented it like three days ago. Um, but see, I thought about making a video called Reef Dog Method on how I keep corals, but that sounds so. I, that just doesn't sound right because it's not. That's not my. You know what I mean? Like, so it doesn't sound right for you. So then you then put my name on it instead. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it. You got it. Okay. Um. So, but what really this is? This is basically I'm going to go through. I've got a list of eleven things, and if okay. you've got to questions at home, by the way, is live chat only, not the comments afterwards. But if you've got questions about how you want to know how Ryan does lighting, flow, nitrate, phosphate, whatever, post them in the chat. And I will ask them. I've probably got most of them covered, um, but uh, there's lots of things to go over. Just so, so everyone's aware, I was I didn't know this was happening. <laughs> yeah, Alex I just, told you like three days ago. Yeah, three days ago you went. This is what we're doing. Don't don't do any homework. Is what you said. Something like that. Yeah. There you go. So I can surprise you with questions now. There you go. Yeah. Come on, so bring gonna... up. If I can beat uh, uh, the AI chat thing, I'm yeah, sure yeah, I can yeah. handle you. Exactly. So I've got 11, excuse me, subtopics that I'm going to go through and ask you how you do things. So first things first, major, major elements, calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium. Okay. Um, what levels, how do you maintain them? How do you test all that stuff? Okay. We're going to have to break. I'm going to go remember the whole question. So we'll have to break it down one, one yep. bit by bit. Okay. So calcium, alkalinity and magnesium i buy the raw materials of each of those um uh it's i only do this every six months and every well, every time I, I check i make sure i get the right materials so i know alkalinity is sodium bicarbonate i know um i think magnesium is magnesium hexahydrate i believe magnesium chloride hexahydrate yeah there you go um and then i think calcium is calcium chloride i'm pretty sure but and so this is I I use your um, your in inverted commas, uh, recipe for making magnesium, and it's hilarious because when you buy it, you buy it from a company in the UK called Intra Laboratories, Intra Labs, yep. and it says <laughs> directions. This is on the bag. Yeah, directions yeah. for general use: add two hundred fifty grams to a kilo to your bath. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Relax I know. and soak for twenty minutes. And I got that, and I was like, "Have I bought the right one?" <laughs> it makes you very uncomfortable when you read that, doesn't like, it? This is used for bath, yeah, but it works. But yes, so that the reason I use that is because it's much, much cheaper than <laughs> buying a bottle with a fish on it, and the chances are it's the same stuff. Yeah. Um, the only thing that's extra that I do is that I use there's um so I actually use Fauna Marin's method and I use their trace elements. So I mix up the solutions based on their recipe with the raw materials, which are basically this will be the roughly the same thing. And then I add their trace elements because otherwise, where am I going to get the trace elements from? Interesting. So that's 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 how I do dosing. So uh, so what's the, the what's the alkalinity? What was the what what do I keep it at? The, the, no no. What was the um, the material? The the uh, sodium bicarbonate. Sodium bicarbonate. Yes. Yeah. So that's the one that doesn't raise pH. Uh, possibly. I've been using the same thing for years. So the original recipe um, that they had, it actually told you what they were and then people like me started doing this <laughs> yeah okay. new recipe for them just says alkalinity solution oh, I so, see. They, so that people can't do this uh, but there's still like you know bastards like me out there telling people what 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 yeah. we used to do <laughs> so sodium carbonate is uh, aka soda ash and that's the one that does raise yes ph yeah no, i if You're sodium bicarbonate is the one i use yeah okay, yeah. okay. are you not but interested you in the reason I do it is because that's what they, that's what their old recipe said. It didn't say sodium carbonate, so I want to keep it the same because I'm using yeah, okay. their trace elements, and I don't know if mm. there'll be different interactions or anything like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so, what level do you keep them at? Uh, so generally, the now obviously there's corals coming in and out of the farm all the time. So when you have a box like yeah, boxes okay. of corals yeah. coming in, or some there'll be there are some days when over 150 frags or more than that will leave. Um, if I'm doing different mystery boxes. Um, so the alkalinity, I try to keep between 8.2 and 8.6. If it's between that, I'm happy. I okay. It doesn't need to be absolutely pinpointed down to 8.2 constantly. Um, so as long as it's within that range, I'm happy. Okay. And remember, if your alkalinity is absolutely set at a specific 
like if it's exactly 8.2 in like and you're and you and it stayed the same for months and months and months it means your corals aren't growing <laughs> because yeah, it, it should it should slowly <laughs> drop uh, and I, I i was just trying to find um a, a video so I, I missed i missed your level what was the levels you aimed for sorry 8.2 <laughs> and 8.6 is why i keep it at. although interestingly i did an icp test that's quite good i did it's an quite icp a narrow band. yeah 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 it's it, to some extent it's just luck i think um it's. I just haven't had a lot of trouble with it after it's been dialed in. Although I, as I said, I did an ICP test, and this ICP test had alkalinity as an option. It was like an advanced ICP test, and I didn't okay. care for alkalinity because I've got the Hannah checker, so it didn't yeah. matter to me. But they came back, and I was going to email them about this. It came back saying it was seven point five, which and what I was don't yours, know. 8 point? It's eight point two, definitely. So why why is there this discrepancy between so ICP tests? <laughs> yeah, but it's that's quite a significant like number out if you think about mm. it, and it it just made it made me go well how many how how many of the others are, are that? But then that water sample's been in transit for two days or whatever long. Or yeah. long. it's been oh, a, in a well the pH must must change surely, and there's a yeah. correlation between pH and alkalinity. I don't know if that's what's. Yeah. I don't know if they might, the people might see this and then they might email me. And there's nothing I use this company all the time. I'm not going to mention the company because I don't know for a fact that it's wrong. If you see what I mean, you it could be right. It could be to do with the pH or something like that. But I if just I thought, guess when you tell me what it is. No, I'm not doing it because it's, is it it's fauna like, marine. <laughs> no, no, this is happening, no. guys. <laughs> no, it's not. I was just going to name them all. It's um, no, because it'd be un- as I said, it's unfair because I don't know. I don't know the reason, but I, I just thought it was odd that it was such a, a discrepancy between the two because you would assume that ICP is, or people do assume, I don't, is absolutely spot on accurate. Is it Triton? <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching his face now. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that, no, that's fine. That's, I don't think that's it's not controversial to say ICP tests aren't 100% accurate. Yeah, no, I know. I was just, I was, as I said, I was shocked. At, uh, so it's made me question my Hannah. So I then, I then changed nah. the the little, um, the little glass files with, with yeah, newer yeah. ones to see if that made a difference, and it didn't make a difference. I changed the, the back. reagent. Definitely fades over time. It was a brand new one. Okay. Yeah. So I tried it with a brand new reagent. It had a new battery in it and a new, um, new little glass curvette or whatever you call them. Curvette. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the video I was trying to get up was uh, was this because what I realised is you shouldn't ever listen to what anyone's got to say unless you've seen their tank. Basically, I was like, "They're my cars." <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. This is this is from my visit. This is a video I put together. Yeah, I did a visit of your place a while ago. Yeah. Um. So <clears throat> there's no point saying, "Oh, Ryan, tell us how uh, you keep corals if no one knows what your corals look like." And yeah, true. These are these are softies at the moment, but we're coming on to the hard stuff. Here we go. So uh, y- your corals are nice. It's I think that's that's not on. Uh, I'm not that's not just me being biased. Those guys I, are really nice. I try my best. I genuinely try my best, and I genuinely also try my best to to send out the ones that I think people would want. Mm-hmm. I look at each coral and go, "Would I be happy with this?" Oh, and most nice. most of the time, I I would go yes. Yeah. Um, but there's lo- there's loads here, so we'll we'll carry on talking. Oh, that's my that's my one. <laughs> I was just thinking. <laughs> hang in a second. I was like, I don't recognize that one. But it doesn't matter no, anyway. No. Does it? That's the gold one. I love. Did that you one. make this especially for tonight? I've never seen this video. Before. No, no, no. I made this ages ago. Oh, did you? Yeah, uh, I think I used it the last time. Uh, I think I used it after I came to your your farm. Uh, what's the website again? www.prestigereef.co.uk. Prestigereef.co.uk. <laughs> anyway, so you get you get the idea. That's the smiley. That's the smiley face. Um, uh, Raja Rampage there. It was famous. Yeah. One. Um, but there you go. You get the idea. No, it's a nice corals. Um, all right. So. What's the what, what calcium and magnesium do you aim? Uh, so calcium is usually between four twenty and four fifty, and magnesium is between one thousand three hundred and fifty and one thousand four hundred and fifty. So there's why a, do you aim for those levels? It's just what I've always kept them at. That, that's that's basically what years and years and years and years ago I did research. Sometimes my uh, <laughs> mag, yeah, and then you do, and you just stick with what works for you. So that, um, I I often find that like I I'll decide I'll do a load of research I'll decide to do something yeah. and then I don't change it not because I remember how why I'm doing it yeah but because I think 
I know I was right at the time. <laughs> yeah. And I don't want to change it now just because I've heard something else new. So because there was I, a good reason for it. When I started the farm, I did loads and loads of research. So what I, what I did is I went and looked at Tidal Gardens, Worldwide Corals, Top Shelf, even there was someone called Pi Pirate something or something like that. Pirate Reef. And, yeah. and I tried to get all of the, I had a notepad. And I, I wrote down everything, every every time someone said that what their calcium was kept at, what their nitrate was kept at, what their um, salinity or, or temperature. And I, I added them all together. And I took an average and and then and that basically what it comes out at. So that's why my tanks are run at twenty five point five, because it was some people are running them at twenty six and some people are running at twenty four. So you, you've taken the next question, which was salinity and temperature. So you run at twenty five point five. Uh, Celsius. for the yeah for the for the t although i have so i've brought that down recently um just because there, I, again i saw a video where there was in the winter i can't remember what company it was they lower the temperature of of their tanks because corals do have a discrepancy yeah, even yeah. in the wild with what they and they just went well we're just wasting electricity trying to keep it at, at a degree warmer so we'll just lower it by a degree and the corals are fine so there's loads of I've seen loads of people like that talking about keeping corals in cooler temperatures. LPS in yep. particular, you'd be surprised at how cold yeah. the water is some in some places. Yeah, hundred percent. Especially when they arrive from in the boxes from Indonesia, they're like sixteen degrees. So if you, oh yeah, <laughs> that's not that's not ideal. <laughs> no, 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 it's not good. But what I'm saying is, it doesn't kill them. Like, no. it's, like it's not yeah, instant yeah, yeah. death. So what do you? So what do you still run it at twenty five and a half, or have you dropped it? I've dropped it more recently to 25. Um, the, I, I, I don't know why it makes Half a difference. A degree, yeah. I know. Wow. It probably, it probably makes a difference on your, your electric. Electric. Meter. Yeah. In theory. Um, although what, all, all that's probably happening is the, the room is then heated more by the air conditioning. So, so probably like yeah, counteract okay. each other. Um, it, something I didn't mention during the very beginning, um, both of my heaters failed on one of the tanks and really? I didn't, I didn't notice uh, and that? it dropped. It dropped down to twenty. Uh, it was last week, I think. It dropped. I, I dropped down. To, I don't know how. I don't know how long ago it was. Yeah. It dropped down to twenty four, and I was like, "Wait a minute, why is this?" Because it felt colder. Uh, you can you can notice. Yeah, yeah. And weirdly, now on that one system, all four of the titanium heaters has gone, but on the other system, not a single one of them's gone. Don't know why. Hmm. So that's very weird. How long have you had like, those heaters? Four years. Well, and not they those together. One. Not those were, they, were they on the same plug? It's just it's weird that they. No, what's probably happened? One of them went. The other one keeps it, it going. Oh, okay. no, 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 it keep, working just too keeps hard. Working, and then the other one stops working. Um, right. <clears throat> I because I just, I had I happen to have so they're five hundred watt heaters. <clears throat> I happen to have a three hundred watt heater from the old Red Sea tank, and I put that in there, and that's it by itself is enough to to get it back to normal temperature so that tells you i don't need a thousand watts i only need 300 if yeah, you include okay. the, the air conditioning yeah, as well because yeah. you heat the room i actually yeah. watched back one of your old videos from when you were setting up the farm yesterday really and you were talking about the air you were heating the room because it's cheaper to, than heating the tanks <laughs> what, what out of interest why did you go back and watch that video <laughs> i think youtube just suggested it to me i can't remember oh, is there, I, there, I is there a gonna be a reef door coral farm coming up that's it yeah yeah looking for uh looking for tips no I, there was i think i might have gone looking for it i can't remember why but yeah do you ever watch any of your old let's, let's see that your old videos are more like educational whereas my, those ones are more like a vlog style so but i haven't watched yeah. them but if i watch them i probably will go back and go i remember building this <laughs> do you know what? so i do occasionally watch older videos not very often yeah i always watch the the I watch when I upload a video, I watch it about five times <laughs> after I've uploaded it and before it goes live yeah. to make sure I've not said the wrong thing or put the wrong picture up with the wrong. Yeah, I do the same. Yeah. Yeah. And it's still some stuff slips through. It's really annoying. Um, but I don't tend to watch old ones, but every now and then I do. And yeah. sometimes I'm like, ah, guys, that was all right. <laughs> and I, I, I sometimes find that I did things back then that I've stopped doing, that I'd forgotten that I'd stopped doing. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, oh, I should do that again. That was really good. <laughs> or I, sometimes I look back and I think that's rubbish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go back far enough. That's more my feelings. <laughs> Not you about yours, about mine. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever experimented with elevated? 
calcium, magnesium, any of that temperature. Oh yes, a hundred percent. I did used to, I did that a lot when I was experimenting years like with, with my one thousand liter tank. So previously, my calcium was I think like four eighty mm-hmm. between four eighty and five hundred. My alkalinity was twelve, which people when they hear that they're like twelve. <laughs> was that to get to to get corals growing faster? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And magnesium was one thousand five hundred. <laughs> So you oh, yeah. basic, basically, corals are quite simple Adaptable. creatures okay. where if you give them more of the correct things in the correct volume, like mm, the correct ratio. ratio of those things, you can get them to grow faster, 100%. Now, if you give them some things like calcium and alkalinity and magnesium at higher levels, but you don't give them higher light, it, it mm. causes you problems. If you don't have higher nutrients, you get burnt tips, for example. So that right. causes you. So you just doing one of these things is not enough. You have yeah. to do all of these things together. And I tell people this in the consultations all the time. So many people these days are trying to turbocharge their tanks yeah. and they ruin them. They literally ruin them because they go, oh, yeah, I've, my alkalinity is 12 or I'm trying to get my pH as high as possible. And it's just stop it. Just just do what people did for years that worked. <laughs> yeah, that's actually why I decided to do this video, uh, because you just you don't piss around with all no. the latest um, fads. You, you, you just you stick to yeah. what what you've been doing for years, what's worked for other people for years. Yeah. And you just follow the basics. You don't try to chase things. It's especially in the first year or so of, of a tank. It's yeah. really easy to try to chase growth. Because yeah. corals don't grow very quick, and you and you, especially actually they do, you just don't notice it. So months apart, a, a frag hasn't become a colony yet. So it's easy to think, right? I need to get my temperature up to the correct level, you know, another degree. Or it's easy to do all those sorts of things and raise my alkalinity. But actually, if you just just offer up the the right water conditions, yeah, that's the best way of doing it. And they'll just and get you. The to- only sacrifice is time. That is the only sacrifice. You have to wait longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just, so if you're patient, this is what I say. Like I say it to people, as I said, it's one of the most frustrating things I come across because people are killing stuff by thinking they can make it grow faster. Well, mm-hmm. I can assure you, if it's dead, it's growing much slower yeah. than, than if it was alive. You, it was obviously a joke, yeah, yeah, but you, yeah. you see what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So by doing these things, you're actually counteracting what you're. You're doing the op- you're getting the opposite to what you actually want. So stop doing it. Just mm. go back to the basics. Keep things of what they're meant to be at, and and just wait longer. Or another idea: buy corals twice as big, or buy two of, corals instead two of the one same frag. Corals. Buy two identical frags, and it will grow <laughs> twice as fast. Buy twenty-one of the same frags. Yeah. 20, yeah. So it is, as I said, it is an area of there's there's two things that quite frustrate me when i when i do the consultations that's one of them and the other one is when people say i have watched this youtuber and this is what (laughs) this is what that youtuber is doing so i'm now doing that i'm afraid i'm responsible for that for or partly anyway myself as well it would be in in uh ph but the the message i'm not the message i'm trying to get across is not the same as the message that is always received yeah no of course but um, but we'll come on to that. But so you've so it's but it's interesting you've experimented with up and down all this sort of stuff. And yeah. to be fair, you've got to experiment because the only way you're going to know for yourself, which you can listen to a thousand people, they'll tell you a thousand different things. The only way you'll know if you if you try things yourself. So for it might all, not be the best way, but it's actually there's not necessarily a bad idea to piss around with parameters. For all the people <laughs> that just heard what I said and they went, I'm going to experiment. I'm going to increase my calcium. I'm going to increase my alkalinity my magnesium i can turn my lights up i can increase my flow are you also going to increase all your trace elements see that's the thing but this is the thing but when you're watching and i've done this before as well you'll watch a video and you'll hear something like you'll hear that little five minute snippet and you'll be like well what's that raising my alkalinity calcium and magnesium increases growth rate cool yeah whereas actually the, the the message from that that you should hear is just leave everything as it is and just be patient yeah, but that's not the sexy message. And you can you, there there are times when you go looking for an answer. Like I've done that. Like what can I get? And as soon as someone says it, you're like, right, I'm doing it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm it's, latching onto that. But stability is so boring. Yeah. Stability. 
but it is so important. And before you change anything as well, get an ICP test done because you might go, oh, I think I need to increase this. That might make mm. things better. It might be something completely different you're just not testing for. This is very true. All right. Nutrients, nitrate and phosphate. Uh, so nitrate has actually come up more recently. Uh, I'm not, it was, it was almost zero for years. No idea why. It was just, all, yeah, on the farm. It was almost, it was almost zero for literally years. It's now between five on one system. I think it's between 2.5 and five and the other system it's five between five and 10. So is that by choice or just this is the way it, it's just it's just gradually increased o over time. And I don't. But I don't, as in the you, difference, you run one at, at a low no, level and one at no, high. They, year, that, yeah. they just they have sort of stopped at that level. Um, I measure out the food that goes in. So, uh, and although they're getting roughly the same amounts of, well, actually, no, one system is actually getting a lot more food because there's more tanks on that system. Okay. Um, but yeah, I I find is, is this is well this is something that is worth people doing and then another thing that i come across in the consultations all the time people say that their nutrients are too high measure what's going in because if you're in a lot of a lot of time it's to do with flake and pellets because uh, they're very nutrient dense mm -hmm. day one you'll put you'll put i'll just put a few pellets in by day like four months there's a pinch yeah. throwing in <laughs> it's not the same amount and then it's built up and you can't work out why yes. because you, you don't notice the, the difference you don't. Yeah. There was well, one of my customers, a guy who um, he said to me, and he won't mind, he's probably listening. He, he won't mind, he generally won't mind me saying this. He'd been everywhere. He tried everything. I, I even got him to send me his water because I felt so bad that he had a, a problem with high nitrate. It was like, it was a hundred. And he, he couldn't work out why it was a hundred. And I, because things like carbon dosing, they should work. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, but what I, I'm pretty sure he, now I can't remember a hundred percent, so this might be wrong, but rather than using cubes, he was breaking off sections of yeah, mysis. Yeah. Now, if yeah. you break off sections of mysis, you're getting different amounts every day. That's why I don't like those slabs. <laughs> yes. Me, me either. I, well, I will always buy the cubes rather than the slabs. Yeah. They are more expensive, but at least I know what's going in. And the, the slabs are actually is better quality mysis often. You can get like RS mysis or PE mysis yeah. in the slabs. You can't get in the cubes or not so easily anyway. Yeah. Anyway. The only way, if you are using the slabs, the only thing you could do and still will be a pain in the ass is to, is to weigh it. But who's going to do what that? What I started doing once, I, I, got, I, I bought a slab and then I got a big chopping knife and ran it across and so cut it into cubes. Yeah. But even then, they were all different sizes and it was yeah. a pain. And because it's kind of half defrosted on the way back from the shop, it's goo. And yeah. Just... Would, you, would you know what's interesting? After about, because the other thing I said to him, look, you've taken a long time to get into this problem. It's taken yeah, months yeah. and months and months. It's not do exactly what I tell you to do for a period of time. The other day he messaged, uh, he, he called me the other day, actually, we added a consult, another consultation. He went, it's worked. So wait, oh, I fixed, he said, How literally, long uh, probably two months, I think, was when that was the not first bad. call. <laughs> and then it, and then it's come down. But he was someone who was absolutely at the end of his, he was, he'd had enough. Yeah, he yeah. tried everything he could think of. He spoke to every shop. But it was more about consistency. Exactly, yeah. It was about like making sure your input is not higher than your output, and then it will come down. <laughs> it's as simple as that. <laughs> so the thing is, with, with keeping corals, if you were to make a video, this is how to keep corals, and yeah. do it properly, the best best way, it would be boring as sin. <laughs> yes, yeah. Because <laughs> it's just really simple stuff. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't make that video. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, it's not... Oh, you said, well, of me. I should no, no, make no. <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, anyway. Okay. Uh, so nitrates, you, are you bothered? What, like, cause it sounds like you don't really care what level of nitrate as long as it's not too high. Uh, I wouldn't want it too low, but as long I, was, and I don't want it, so I don't want it higher. Than, <laughs> no, no. It was like, there was a color on the nitrate test kit, Okay, but it was like the lowest color. Right. Okay. So um, there was something there. It was like one probably. Yeah. Um, okay. Whereas, the um yeah and i don't i don't want it higher than 10 10 is ideal for me between really? 5 and 10 is what i want do you know if it creeps above that do you what do you notice or do you notice things i don't know any, i i wouldn't just... I, I actually don't know i've never had nitrate higher than 10 so i'm just it's one of those like things where i'm sticking to it just because it's worked that, yeah because i always used to carbon dose before on my um on the 1000 liter tank so it again it was i actually 
overdose when I was overdosing carbon now. I now realize that I had like the pastely coral effect. Okay, interesting. So I was, it was too low because I was also using Rarefoss as well. Yeah. So, but yeah, so between five and 10 is ideal. I'm looking a bit bleary eyed at the moment. I did a, I, I've told you that I'm not bored. I did a motorcycle safety course because yeah. it crashed. Yeah. I did a, so I, 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 and you do an observed ride with the police. You go out with the police bikers. They're like high level bikers. Yeah. And I was out for about four hours on the bike. It was quite intense. But anyway. Yeah. It was it's all right. I was out pieing last night. But I just, I wanted to, to mention it. Anyway. Uh, all right. Phosphate. Phosphate. Is I think phosphate is actually more difficult to manage than, than most people. Um, for, so phosphate is far more difficult to manage than nitrate, I find personally. Um, it's usually around 0 0.8. Um, if it creeps higher than that... 0 0.08. Zero, yeah, sorry, yeah, 0 0.08. Yeah. Um, so everyone's going, oh, I can pay mine at 8 yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, so 0 0.08 is, is, is where I, tr it, I try to, to keep it at. Um, I have some very big fish... I yeah, I I've, yeah, I've yeah. definitely made some mistakes with the coral farm that I wouldn't do again. I've, I've one thing on, on the whiteboard for a start. Yeah, oh, I could get that off if I really <laughs> wanted to. I just can't bother. <laughs> um, I there are I've got loads of fish in there that don't that I've just sort of inherited over the years where people have gone. Oh, will you take my two massive maroon clownfish? Okay, go on then, put them in that tank. Or oh, will you take my ten chromis? Go on then, put them in that tank. Do you want a fox fate? Yeah, go on then. So I have all these, and I've got a Soho tang, which is over a foot long. That needs a lot of food. Yeah. So that is not helping with, with phosphate, for example. That's probably why my nitrates have come up, because I've started to heavily feed for the, some of the fish. Mm -hmm. um, so if I did it again, there's certain things I would change. Um, I sort of got carried away. I was just a bit excited. I had all these tanks I could play with and get all these fish I wanted. Um, whereas okay. if I did it again, I'd be a bit more like this tank only really needs two tanks rather than 10. <laughs> if you've got, you've got some big tanks there though. Yeah. Why don't you just eat one of them? Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. I thought you were going to say, why don't you put them in the water box? No, no, eat it. So, see, the smaller system has a massive powder blue in it. It has a massive regal tang. It has a massive Soho tang. It's like, I don't need these, your coral farms don't need those sorts of fish in them. They people need like two zebrazomas. <laughs> people eat those fish all the time, not just like not hobbyists. Yeah, but you know, I like, don't eat fish, do I? Oh, yeah. You're a vegetarian. Vegetarians eat fish, right? Uh, no, no. Just, I know you said that was a joke. Right. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I can, I can feel the people screaming at me, going, oh, you are. Yeah. I, don't like, I don't care either way." No, no. no. Um, my cat's just coming and opened the door, so now I've got a draft, which is nice. Oh, why don't you eat that? Since you're on the other <laughs> that's one, a good you're point. Yeah. Your pets. <laughs> yeah, it's quite. Yeah, it's quite sizable. To be fair. Um, all right. So phosphate. And do you notice a difference if your phosphate gets too high or too low? What? What? Yes. What do you look for? Yes. Um, if phosphate gets too high, the the corals definitely, especially in the SPS tray. I was going to say. Yeah. Color. What about definitely. what about? Yeah. So so all right. So what do they go brown or? They get they yeah they they go and what that see that's the main reason I don't have acros. That's the honest answer because yeah, you're paying me ass. <laughs> if like. As I said, I could spend thousands on getting acros in, go away for six weeks, come oh, back, okay, they're all dead or they're all brown. And yeah. it's like, if I can make the same money from selling something different, just sell something different. Yeah. I know that people would go, oh, you don't sell the really, really high-end fancy stuff, but I don't need to. And it's as simple as that. Because mm -hmm. it's not if it's not going to be profitable for me, what's the point? <laughs> yeah. Well, I've I've acclimated my SPS to high levels of phosphate. True. So these are these are super acros. True. I should sell them for like five times the price, shouldn't I? Really? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to anyway, have okay. some of those when that when the water box is up and running. Remember, okay. you said you're going to get you'll sort me out some like fancy yeah. pieces. Oh yeah, yeah. I need. Yeah, I keep meaning to do that. I should have done it weeks ago. And then they're. I know. Ready like, it's, it's not. It's not even remotely ready. So. But it, it might be. I might. Anyway, never mind. <laughs> we'll pick it up later. So, what about if uh, phosphates get too low? What, uh, what difference does that make? Uh, so I actually, I originally, the very, very beginning, I <laughs> dosed phosphate and nitrate. Yeah. Um, I can't remember which brands I used. I've actually still got the bottle. because. So I started, for people who don't know, I put corals in on day one. So I filled the, well, it was te technically day two. I filled the tanks up with okay. new seawater, like not seawater, new, newly mixed water, salt water. 
And then the next day, I put loads of coral in, <laughs> like loads, because it was all the coral from my thousand litre tank. Um, I always wonder, I have to be careful because that's what I remember, but that might not even be true. And there's yeah. a video which will tell the truth, if you see what I mean. Um, but that's what I think happened. Um, corals don't like very low phosphate. And even if you drop your phosphate too much, and this happens to me sometimes, you're, you're, and it only happens in the LPS tray. I don't know why. <laughs> Never happens in the SPS tray. If you drop your phosphate too much, it will kill something. Don't know why. Mm, interesting. I, d I don't know if they are more sensitive to drops in phosphate than than. Is SPS. that because is that just b b because of a quick drop or because of the, the low number? No, what? it's a quick drop. The quick drop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. If it's a quick <laughs> drop, the LPS definitely <clears throat> suffer more than the SPS with a quick quick drop. Okay, that's interesting. What do, do you notice a difference in okay, S SPS? You notice a difference with uh, nitrates and phosphates. What about LPS? Uh, yeah, well, I, well, that's that's what I mean. So it, if I drop it, there's a definite difference. Well, yeah, because it <laughs> there is a significant. I don't notice a difference in coloration, although I think the coloration with uh, LPS is is more subtle generally than it is with SPS corals because SPS go from like green or red or to literally brown whereas lps corals are sometimes a bit darker rather than brown i tend to find i i never notice a difference in the coloration of my or the health of my lps corals yeah. when my nitrate and phosphate fluctuates and i've looked back at photos i've looked back at old results yeah i don't tend to notice a difference but i do notice a difference when uh, my calcium and magnesium fluctuates. They really don't like that. Weirdly, interesting. They, so because SPS, SPS don't like anything changing. <laughs> yeah. But they, they, SPS don't like nitrate and phosphate differences. Yeah. LPS seem less bothered. Although I mean, I see, as I said, I found it the other way around. I've definitely oh, really? found it the other way around where the LPS seems to be more affected by a significant switch. But that's quick I, changes, though. Yes, I'm not talking. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I, I'm, I would be comfortable using like a, a significant amount, and I did this the other day, of, of that Fossey X on the L SPS tank, whereas I would use half that amount on the LPS tank. So there, okay. there is a huge difference that, you, that I noticed, though, with the SPS. When you bring it down, they get brighter colored, they grow faster. The first thing you notice when you lower your phosphate is your alkalinity drops significantly. Yeah, okay. So yeah, that, okay. so there is definitely an, a massive impact from them. All right. So grow uh, SPS faster by uh, low phosphate. It's not exactly groundbreaking, yeah. <laughs> but you know, yeah. I don't do anything uh, groundbreaking. That's why there is no press no, no. method. <laughs> uh, flow. Flow is something on the farm I don't actually have very done very you, well. You've got powerheads, and that's it, basically. I have power, but only on one side. Oh, why have you gone? So oh, you've asked. Have you just asked for a beer? Correct. I say, see how well I know you. You put it on silent, no. and then and all of a sudden, I'm like, <laughs> "Yep, yeah, he's just asked for a beer." Yeah. Um, flow. So, this is something else that I would do differently with the coral farm. The flow is only on one side of the tank. There is yeah. flow coming underneath, which because under your that, trays are effectively peninsulas, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. Um, it works okay. Uh, it could be improved, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the um, there, the, the, I've no, the biggest thing about flow that I've noticed is you get very different growth patterns. If you put corals near the flow, like SPS corals, they grow very clumped up, as if to create like a barrier to go right. stop hitting us. Okay. And if you put them miles away, like they grow in a more uh, like like spaced out pattern. And that definitely happens with Pacillopora. That is the that's the one you notice on the most. Okay. Pacillopora with high flow grows very bunched up. Further away, it doesn't even look like Pacillopora. Yeah, okay. So it looks more it has sort of the growth pattern of like hystrix when it's not near the flow. Yeah. I haven't noticed difference in growth patterns, but I've definitely I felt a, um, pre, um BRS talk about this loads lately. Yeah. But I've noticed a couple of years ago, thank you. <laughs> But um, some of my some of my acros grow towards the flow. Yeah, well, that's that a different thing. Growth. That's a different growth pattern. I suppose so. Yeah, but it just that I was like, 
what why is that happening <laughs> it doesn't make any sense but it actually does make sense yeah when you think about it, but um they, because they want flow yeah they're getting That's the better part of the water for them to be in yeah th those areas are getting better nutrient export from them and they're also being supplied with new elements as well see i'm going to tell you something this is nothing from me this is from brs apparently there is a water layer barrier. a very yeah. very thin barrier of water around each of the corals and that needs to be broken for the corals to get the nutrients that they need and to expel the nutrients they need. Otherwise, you have this area which is full of coral shit, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why flow is important for those people who didn't know. But And like I said, that's not my information. That's just what I've watched on their video. So do you, do you, can, you I think you have quite low flow. I do have low flow. I have very, yeah. very low flow. It's, especially, and that's low. another reason the acros are not sort of, I don't right. have the system really built for acros. I have it built for mass producing, fast growing. Um, One SPS. Like this. Yeah. This is a that's, decent sized company. That's that's tiny compared to how, how, how it was before those 21 pieces got taken out. <laughs> oh, that's quite a while ago, I suppose. Right? Yeah. Okay. But so, you, and so, yeah, so lower flow because you don't have acros, so you're not so fast. But what I have realized, though, is that <laughs> some of these corals, which people think need really, really high flow, just don't need really, really high flow. Okay, like what? The, well, look at think about all the Montes, which are six feet away from the powerhead, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they're growing fine. All the Pasilloporas are growing fine. They, they said there's a different growth <laughs> pattern, but they're a long way away from it. Um, there is, the other issue with the farm is that the bit that's right where the powerhead is you need to have very specific corals in those areas because some corals just cannot grow there. Uh, whenever, that's the one of the biggest challenges in my tank is <clears throat> corals in front of the powerheads because there there there's corals that have either grown to the point that they're in front of the powerheads yeah. or I've had to add another powerhead and it can only go in one spot and it's right by a coral and they just yeah. don't like it. it like corals there's... love acros love strong flow but they don't like Direct. Flow straight at them. Yeah, just yeah. Like, and they they, um, really, they strip and they actually what I find is they die on one side where they're getting blasted. Yeah, and then the other side is okay. <laughs> There's certain corals which I've realised, and you only realise this from trial and error with the farm, that can tolerate incredibly high flow. I have a chalice. Oh, that really? I have a I have a chalice which where the MP40 is like I can't get the thing, but the MP40 is like that way there, and the chalice is growing on it like that, cupped up. I, so mine the, has exactly the same. My Raja Rampage does exactly that. So it the flow is being, is being hit it. onto the chalice and then bounced yeah. up off within <laughs> inches. Um, I the what, um, part, what percentage do you have your MP40s? Probably forty, I reckon, between forty and sixty. Yeah, they're mine high, like 80, 90. <laughs> Yeah, I know, but I, I definitely yeah, yeah. couldn't grow anything at that height. Plus, it starts to over the water. Oh, starts it's, to it's come a out shallow tank. tank, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> It's um so so, yeah, so, so you say that LP that corals don't need flow. Do they tolerate it? Do, are they look? No, no, no. That's not what I said. They don't. No, 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 no. They don't need as much flow as people think they need. And another question which people like have anxiety over, which they ask me all the time, is, um, um, is my tank getting enough flow? And generally speaking, as long as you, these remember, these are beginners starting their tank. If you've got a power head on one side of your tank and a power head on your other side of the tank, most of the time. For a beginner, that that's all you need. Yeah, <laughs> very true. At, like a powerful yeah. enough one. This is my K tank. That's all I've got. Oh, actually, yeah. I was about to say on my LPA, I've got four <laughs> on a two yeah. foot tank, which is crazy. But yeah, that is that's all you need. Okay. Some people what? ask me about the frog spawns and the hammers and the gonies. They go, "Oh, does it need to be like waving it like this?" And you go, "Well, look at my tanks. They're like this. Just very, just very subtle movements. Doesn't need to be absolutely blasted." So, what about so that what I've realized is there's a million questions coming in, and what you need to do is watch this quick. back and and type a comment in reply to every question. <laughs> but, uh, specific question about pectinia, do you? Do I you ignored that one because I don't know the answer. <laughs> okay, so okay. <laughs> I, do do not, I genuinely, don't sorry, I, actually, I, I do have a pectinia and it's sort of in medium flow, it's like it's, it's being shadowed by a mont like that like, you know, massive Montepora colony, yeah. Well, yeah, that protects yeah, yeah. it from the Great. flow, and it's sort of in the middle of the tank. So okay. I can't tell you, but it it's um, yeah. I I have a, a, a space invader pectinia, lovely coral, by the way. Yeah. Um, 
and it's weird sometimes it looks like it looks like it's puffed up and it looks like yeah. it's bloated and then other times it looks like someone's popped it yeah and it's gone all and then the next day it'll be back it's just it does that it's yeah weird. my one i realized that, i think yesterday i was like my one's got stripes on it it's never had stripes ever and now it has these literal black like not black but like dark bands on it and i don't know where yeah. that's come from yeah mine is mine is at the bottom towards the bottom of the tank with you'd probably say medium flow but I don't know if that I've not experimented. Is that why or not? It looks. Nice, I, I, so. I don't know. About the reason I was laughing. The reason I was laughing is because we started forty-five minutes ago. You told me we had eleven <laughs> questions and we've done my parameters. <laughs> I, I was thinking. I was thinking that we might need to do a part two. All right. Well, let, let's let's move on in that case. We'll, yeah. We'll, we'll, I can take a hint. Uh, this one is. Oh, all right. Next It'll be one-word one answers. <laughs> a temperature I've put on twice. Wicked. I delete that one. Okay. Uh, next one. Light. Go. One word. So each tank. Is one word, good. Ryan. Each tank has different lights. That's, that's more than one word. <laughs> Light. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That's one yeah. word. Right, next. Uh, no, people ask me all the time what my um, my radials are set to. There's two things you need to be aware of. Firstly, my tanks are more shallow than yours, so it's irrelevant what mine are set to. Um, I think they're about 40, between 40 and 60%, depending on which tray they're on. Uh, the Zoa tray is much less, but as I said, totally irrelevant because you don't have corals which are six inches below above the below the water line so it's irrelevant if you if they're 40 yeah. yeah, but you're, what i'm saying is you're not gonna get the ones at the bottom are you no okay what's this got to do with light it sounds like you're talking about float no that's my par that's my radion oh, par par. sorry i thought yeah. you were talking about yeah okay no, that's not my par it's my radion what par seven. do you do you know what have you done par test you must have done uh between 100 and 150 on the lps tray and slightly higher on the sps tray as but some that. some um i have some monties in like 50 par and they're fine they're like <laughs> if, if i put them in a different tray just to like move them over and yeah. then yeah again people think that there's corals are a lot hardier than we think they are and you might not get I, the biggest thing i noticed with low par montipora you don't get the same coloration as high par montipora as in you get better coloration low much, par or high par? much better with higher oh but right please, okay. please don't go and like <laughs> increase <laughs> increase your percentage all of a sudden <laughs> bleach them oh, yeah why all my corals are white but it definitely um, makes a difference so i think with some it does some it doesn't i've got a um a gold rush monty yeah, that I tried to acclimate to higher light over a long period of time. Yeah, and it just it didn't like it, and it only ever likes lower light. But I've got my uh, sunset Monty, looks fantastic, and that must be getting at least two hundred, probably three hundred par. Interesting. So what I do, I I will grow coral in the bottom tray, which is lower, um, and then and it will be the wrong color, and then I'll move it up to the higher tray, and then I'll and once it's changed coral, I'll then sell it. So I always have a selection okay. in the lower tray. Yeah. And then once the higher tray, once the higher tray is sold one, I then move it one from the lower tray into the higher Let one. It color up. <laughs> it, it changes color and then I move it on because I haven't got enough space to have all of them in the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so low par, low par, I think that would, we would, we would be fair to say. And yeah. you just said it, you just said it to AB plus and then that's it. And yeah, and a percentage. 12 yeah. hours a day? Yes, twelve. Yeah, you no more is it better? Is the corals cannot photosynthesize for more than twelve hours a day? It is enough. is not beneficial and potentially harmful to have yeah. more than twelve hours. Do you have a, a an intense period for six or seven hours a day? Or? Yes, it ramps up and down. So I, I think your, I have, your, I think I have a two hour ramp up and two hour ramp down. I think it could be. An so hour. you've got about eight hours of in, of max yeah. intensity. Okay. Yeah. Remember, I set these up four years ago. And never. I'm not like you. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So you're asking, you're asking me for settings, which I literally set once for th in the space of 30 seconds four yeah. years ago. <laughs> I think my uh, peak period is between six and eight hours on. Although my LPS tanks is less anyway. Yeah. Anyway, um, so we've got we've got lots more to, to come. We're not going to get through them all. No. But rock and filtration. Do you have live rock? No, I do have. Uh, I had when I started tanks. I put some of that bio filter media in Max Spec blocks. Yeah, 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 bio, yeah, yeah. But I took them out actually because oh, right. that, I, I think that I think that mm. does contribute to low nitrate because they they're meant to. Yes, that's exactly what I was going to say. And yeah. I found I, I had Ciparax, which is basically well, yeah. similar, uh, it's glass. But I took a load of that out because my nitrates was getting were getting too low, and and that did help. 
Yes, and that, so that I think I have one block in each system, and obviously those systems are, I think, one's 2,500 and one's 1,500. Did you have them in a low flow area out of the light? No, they're directly in front of the power head. <laughs> I really? I use them to block the flow for the corals, <laughs> which I, okay. that's what I do. You know, remember I said oh, there's some corals which can have high flow. Yeah. I in in front of each power head, pretty much. So in in the top tray, there's a pavona on one side, which can tolerate literally being battered, and then it disperses the flow around. And on the other side, I have a. I think it's a Jedi mind trick Montipora, which again tolerates it completely fine. Okay. Uh, so that's rock. Uh, it's what about filtration? What filters do you have? Uh, none really. It's like well, you've the got a phosphate reactor in a skimmer. Oh, oh yeah. So, so I I ha have filter media, which I change out once a week, which is probably not enough. What filter media? Like filter, filter floss. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Originally, in the original videos, I had filter cups no no no, no the yeah filter socks yeah, filter yeah. socks yeah um i, I think when you want the 12 inch ones which i think is what that the size was they're like 50 to 70 pounds each i had to buy wow. 12 of them and they lasted a week and i threw yeah. them away yeah. because because they're so annoying but so that, they clog and it's like impossible to clean them properly <laughs> i know so i just went no nope, not for me so yeah. it was funny because um I, I remember I, judging you actually when that when that video I was like Jake Adams that? literally <laughs> sent me a message saying this guy's going for uh, as low maintenance as possible because obviously of all the dosing and everything I was doing yeah, yeah. and then he picked filter socks I was like <laughs> ah, fair point fair point okay. <laughs> so you use filter floss and what's that for Do you, is that for nitrates or just polishing the I don't really know just... I've just got it because the 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 water flows into it, it takes out big bits of food and stuff yeah, like that yeah, yeah. big chunks um yeah so that's why i have that then i had then obviously it goes through the system with all the corals <laughs> they're in themselves are a filter because they're taking out lots yeah, of stuff completely. um and then i have a protein skimmer and a reactor for phosphate remover and that's... they're both not there's a nios quantum protein skimmer yeah, quantum and 220 torque. and the torque yes correct that torque reactor is brilliant by the way it does. It's brilliant for the the media that we use. It's not brilliant for Rafos. Because, oh, really? Well, you, it's too you, fine. Or... No, it's not. You can't like so. Rafos needs to be washed yeah, before yeah, you yeah. use it. So <laughs> with the old reactor I had, which had a pipe going into it and it flowed through the reactor and then a pipe coming out, you would literally during a water change take the pipe out, put it into a twenty five liter container, fill the container up, then the water's running clear, yeah. put it back in the tank the torques come out the top don't they yeah. so you can't <laughs> clean it okay not as you, easily you actually don't have to clean it and if you go really? on the Rofos website there are certain circumstances when they recommend you do rinse it and certain circumstances when they recommend you don't it turns everything which, brown <laughs> well that's the thing, that's why i don't i just don't like brown crud on my on my sump but actually yeah. all that the really fine stuff yeah that's quite effective but anyway whatever I, I just really like it i find it really easy to dial in so it tumbles all the stuff really yeah yeah that's easy. true yeah it's very good uh anyway so that's filtration you, you don't have any other filters I, that's uv i've just someone trevor's just disagree with me about photosynthesis being capped at 12 hours that is what scientists have said dangerous to state that as a fact i don't think it's dangerous no that that that, that <laughs> I, it literally that, that is definitely comes from somewhere but for like hobbyist level yeah don't do more than 12 hours <laughs> no no there are some things there are certain things that you should just accept as a yeah. fact <laughs> in the hobby <laughs> and one of them is that your lighting period should be 12 hours yeah at some point like when you it, when you're sort of trying to work your way around the hobby when you're very new yeah sometimes you'll be like oh do i need, do I need to be 11 and a half hours or or should i be 12 and a half no just 12 hours is fine there's, there's certain things, as I said, like even what I said with flow, which was a generalization, one side, other side, most of the time for a beginner, you're good to go. Yeah. 12 hours lights, you're good to go. Uh, anyway, sand, you don't, you're bare bottom, Ooh, saucy in your farm, aren't you? Uh, I do, yes, although I, I do bare bottom, kind of. Well, the reason I went, I, the reason I had, a, uh, I went for a bare bottom stilt. <laughs> Uh, no, so actually, the someone so I spoke to someone actually who who was I don't I can't say too much, but who was setting up their own sort of coral system, and he said to me, "Would I um, 
have that closed loop system where it flows underneath. Absolutely. It pretty much, other than, big, go, yeah. Yeah, other than the big frags, which have fallen down, which obviously don't get blown up, the bottoms of the tanks are surprisingly clean from of silt because it it keeps it clean yeah, underneath. Okay. So that's that's well worth doing. That's that's one of the reasons it's bare bottom. Second okay. was because I wanted to keep it as like easy to maintain as possible. Yeah. Um, it would be well, weird if you did have sand. By the way, I do just, have sand in there now because I put for each of the rats I put in a little plastic container ah, of sand, of and, they and then the rats took it out. Because <laughs> they're idiots. Okay. So now you see them lying in this like millimeter of sand. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, look, yeah. you had a choice. It's your fault. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you Don't look at me choice. like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Uh, trace elements. You and I often say we don't dose trace elements, but we both actually do. Oh, we did. Yeah, we definitely <laughs> dose trace elements because we we dose it as part of dosing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, so what, I what trace elements do you dose? Uh, the fauna marine ones is the ones I use. So you buy? Is it two bottles? I don't know what that stuff is. I think it might be three. The the Tropic Marine is A plus and K minus. Fauna Marine. The, fauna Marine. Yeah, they, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's trace elements one, two, and three, oh, and two oh. of them go in one container. Uh, what it, so I can't remember which one, but I think calcium has maybe two, alkalinity has one, and then magne or, and magnesium has none. It, that might not be right. As I said, you put them in your um, in in the in the uh, alkalinity. Yeah, they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. go in the solutions. Yeah, yeah, yeah because uh, the whole so point you... is in theory that the corals utilize those trace elements based on ratio. calcium component. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, in the same ratio. That's the theory, anyway. Because I've never been brave enough to do that because I can't be bothered to work it out exactly because you, you need to measure. Like if you do the, if you follow the Red Sea Trace program, yeah, it tells you to base it on your calcium uptake. Yeah. Um, and, and, but, and I always think if I'm put, if I'm going to put um, trace elements in my alkalinity or calcium yeah. uh, supplements, dosing liquids, if I don't get it in the right ratio, I've just wasted a batch of trace. So I've never been bothered to do that. You could also it, it, overdose because you can yeah. overdose trace elements, definitely. Oh, completely. But instead, I just I buy stuff that has that stuff. They've already done that. They've done the thinking for me. Yeah, ATI plus essentials plus. Yeah. The the other thing with trace elements, the only thing that I so I do an ICP test, and there are certain trace elements. As I said, manganese and molybdenum are the two ones that I keep that which I closely strontium as well. Um, so strontium is no, not I've never never done anything with potassium. Do, so do you dose any of these separately? So if so, not on a dosing pump. Once the ICP test comes back, it says you need to put this much in, and then I put it in. And then obviously, as I do water changes, you it, like water changes don't do enough, but they keep on top of it like as much as take you the need. Edge off. Yeah, they take the edge off and then go back to trace elements and top them up as and when. How often do you do ICPs? Not enough. More re recently, I've done. I've been doing them more. Um, I actually, I, I. I'll be honest with you. I I will look at the goniopora and go, is that as healthy as it can be? <laughs> is it is it closed up? Is one piece closed up of of ten pieces of it? And then so everyone will. When you've been doing this long enough, you will see a coral in your tank and you'll go, that coral looks different. I know that there's something wrong with this water. There's so you. There's I, like I a, ask. Uh, do you do an ICP test? Ryan's like, I am the ICP test. <laughs> no, I do them where, as and when. There's not. A, I don't do them every month. Although I might start doing them more consistently. Okay. Yeah. Um. But usually, if a coral can't, it looks different, I go something's wrong, and it's not a basic thing. I need to do a test. Interesting. And then you find that your molybdenum is low. Or <clears throat> that, this time it wasn't. Uh, actually, one of them. I think. I think molybdenum. But they come back and they go. Yeah. What you need to do is you need to, you need to dose half a milliliter know, for thirty days. days. Yeah. And you're like, why can't you be an easy one like strontium where you just put like a liter in? <laughs> yeah. But then that's why you need dosing pumps, individual. Yeah, pumps. I know. And I do have spare pumps in there. I just I don't I don't know what sure what it is. I don't like the idea of. I don't know. I've just realized there was some one story from the news I meant to mention. I didn't yeah, mention. I did notice you've missed one off. You said we've got one more left, and then you played the thing. Oh, right. I just, I'm just terrible at this. <laughs> uh, we, we've got about a minute left. The Refactory are bringing out a new app <clears throat> yeah. as of Monday. Uh, a whole new app that's uh, uh, sort of going to be totally different from the sounds of it. I'm always apprehensive when companies make massive changes because their app is really good. Yeah. So I'm, I'm worried they're going to stuff it up. I suspect they won't. But the re reason I mentioned that was because 
when they brought out when Reef actually brought out their ICP tests, they 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 talked about how you can if you if you're brave enough to trust them, which I wouldn't, you could set it up so it yeah. connects it to your dosing pump. So you have a dosing pump for strontium, wow. a dosing pump for potassium, and then the idea is your ICP test come back. It says you need to dose one milliliter of, of iodine five days in a row. You yeah. click a button and then it's done. I mean, look, don't get me wrong. That is actually clever that they can do that. Brilliant. And it's nothing to do with them. It's more of whether you filled up the iodine container. Or yeah, it's true. Or, or if it's, or if like some of it has evaporated. So the iodine concentration is now higher than it was before. Yeah. See what I mean? yeah, yeah. But yeah. Anyway, um, three more things. We're going to rattle, rattle through them. Do you dose okay. bacteria? No. Ever. I have dose. I, when I very first started, I dosed um, a few different types. Fritz was one of them. And I, I think maybe Dr. Tim's or something. I wanted a, a range of different ones. But generally, if I want to put bacteria in the tank, I'll get it from another successful reef tank or okay. live rock. That's how I okay. add to my bacteria. Or think about it. Corals have bacteria on them. Every time I'm adding corals, I'm adding bacteria. Oh, that's very true. Yeah, okay. Uh, do you dose amino acids? No. I'm coral a simple food. man. And I don't know <laughs> don't do coral food either. I did I did originally feed coral food. Uh, and there are benefits to feeding coral food. Generally speaking, I think it's for the average hobbyist, this is controversial. I don't think this is controversial. It does more harm than good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, completely right. So but you 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 feed most you feed your fish mostly frozen food. Frozen food, pellets, and nori. They get and, you, quite a and lot. your corals must catch some definitely. of the. Oh yeah, definitely. That's, 100%. that's one of the reasons I feed frozen food is because you often see LPS catching it. Yeah, and all, not just that. All the like, like stuff there, the goop. The, yeah, <laughs> the all the other stuff. Yeah, yeah it, they 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 eat all that. Corals, I think, definitely benefit from having particulate food of some sort because that's what they're catching in the ocean. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yes yeah um so yeah it's so yeah I, I did feed coral food when i had very very low nutrients at the very very beginning um but do i think it's beneficial for most people i was one of those people again this bothers me it happens all the time people go to the fish shop they buy their first coral the shops sell them a box of a thing of coral food it exactly right. what i did bottle of algae food <laughs> it's, I had one that you put in the fridge that was that you had a yeah, syringe and the Red Sea stuff. Yeah, yeah it it wasn't necessary. No, it wasn't Red Sea, but it wasn't. I I don't think it's beneficial, and it, I think it, it and that's what it annoys me. Because, it's beneficial if you get it right, but you're probably no, not going to get it right. No, okay, let's put it this way: it's, if a shop sells, if you buy one coral and a shop sells you coral food, yeah, then <laughs> they're not they're more interested in the money you're getting from the coral food than the coral because they know that and the coral, money they the, and the money that they're going to get when that dies <laughs> <laughs> well they know that that green star polyps or that toadstool or whatever it is doesn't yeah. actually need it it's just going to eat light yeah okay yes so so people it, it surprises people quite often when i tell them i don't feed my corals anything at all anymore you did you fed red sea reef energy for a period yeah 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 i did yeah that's what i'm saying there were some things i did do i i, fed, I tried i had five liters of reef energy which um came with the why red did sea you tank. stop because it, it came with a red sea tank so it was just oh, i was just using okay. as i had it use it okay yeah did um, you notice any difference whilst you're feeding and then after honestly no no uh mm. i don't know you obviously you get a reaction from the coral so it's obviously doing something um i've got benny pets uh which benny is meant Reef, to yeah. That's meant to be the best coral food, like supposedly. Like what is classified as best, I don't know. But if you look at anecdotal evidence, it's meant to be the best. So I bought that. Yeah. Uh, people say that reefroids is like just dosing phosphate, but again, it I is. don't have experience. But that's what <laughs> isn't that what all coral foods are? <laughs> it's it that it that's particularly phosphatey. It doesn't mean that it's not good. It will be good for some corals, but you've just got to keep an eye on your phosphate. Yeah. Um, all right, last last thing then, because and we've rattled through this a little bit, I'm afraid. Yeah, pests and algae. What and this is so, oh, well, how do I deal with them? I, uh, prevention, we know because you've talked about before. But how do you? What do you have in your tank that deals with pests and algae, if any should get through? So I've got loads Rasses of tanks. And tanks. <laughs> right, yeah, basically. So yeah. different <laughs> tanks will eat different algae. Um, yeah. Some of them will eat. So one of the more difficult ones is bubble algae that fish some often won't eat 
However, Fox fish Fox. will learn from other fish. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Um, the very, very, very first fish I ever got, which ate bubble algae, it was a convict tank. And once I put that in the tank, this was in my 1,000-litre tank, um, then the zebrazoma started eating it. Huh. And, and now, like, so the, the purple tangs will eat it, the powder blue tang will eat it, the convict tang. So they can learn, although it might not be as, as appetizing as potentially some of the softer algae. Interesting. But okay. My convict tang is an absolute beast. <laughs> what, what, are, what are your best tangs for eating algae? Zebrazomas, 100%. Really? Yeah. Okay. They're like, they've got that like sort of like, Ze I would say zebrazomas and my convict tang's pretty good. I would say would be the would be the best ones I've got. So if you could People... only have three tangs in a tank, which would, which would they be? Uh, any zebrazoma. So probably like to keep it cheap, you can have a scopus or a yellow or a purple. So one scopus. Yeah. Um, no, 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 definitely. <laughs> that. Um, I have bristle tooths in all the tanks. I was going to ask, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Convict tanks are known convict. for being quite heavy on algae eating. So you'd I'm, have a you'd have a, a bristle tooth, a zebrasoma, and a convict. Probably something like that. Yeah, maybe the convicts and the bristle tooth mm -hmm. will eat similar things. Um, I don't rate fox faces at all. I know you like I know you like rabbit fish. I just I don't them. rate them, and they come with more hassle than they're worth. Hundred percent. They're a risk with corals. That's the thing. Yeah, they're, they eat them. <laughs> well, that's. I think they're 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 a risk in them. But so Dory will eat corals. Yes, I. Well, that's why that's why my regal tank, which again didn't ask for, just materialized, <laughs> yeah, yeah. is in my SPS tray because I don't trust it with anything else. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but uh, anyway, all right, fine. Uh, uh, well, we've rattled through that, <laughs> and I would. To be honest, I would. I think we could probably do an entire live stream on each of those topics. You could. We could look. We can always ex extend it into if you if you weren't happy, we can always extend because I could tell you what rasses I use for what pests and it, things like really interesting stuff. Is when <clears throat> like what the the tangs. Yeah, that was a, that's a really interesting conversation. Yeah. Um, it's like possum ras is not a ras that most people would get. If if someone says ras for pests, people will go yellow cars <laughs> which i know annoys you because they don't exist but a canary yeah. ras or Six a melanaris yeah, yeah. but possum ras are brilliant <laughs> so yeah there are things all right that... we'll, we'll carry on because there, there are things like that that are really interesting because you've got a, a coral farm your experience is just totally different and you're in there all the time yeah you try different things and you know so it's just it's interesting so all right well we'll we'll do a we'll do something else another time okay but there we go uh we've rattled through everything <laughs> but we've okay. got it two hours seven minutes yeah do you have any final words of wisdom no, i needed to pee like seven minutes ago okay <laughs> I, I like... didn't even I, I was going to ask you about ph but we'll do that another time no we're not gonna do that now i'm not sure i'm not <laughs> sure i can hold it <laughs> it's been two hours because <laughs> actually on that point oh, I know. <laughs> anyway anyway because you got a shameless plug everyone go and buy some coral give me loads Excellent. to do next week Buy some coral and check out my Etsy store whilst you're there. True. Link in description. Yes. <laughs> right. Thanks for joining, guys. I really enjoyed this one. I'll catch you again soon. Yeah. See you later. Bye. See you, bye.